Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 26 Chapter 26 A Busy Week The next week was filled with hard work as I searched for potential lawyers and accountants but had little luck. It wasn't because they were hard to find but they themselves were lacking in some way. I tested each person I met on not just their knowledge but also their character through dialogue. I needed people who would truly provide the help we required. Most of them passed the knowledge part and showed that they were really skilled and had the experience to boast but all failed when it came down to character. They usually tried scamming me or giving me a bad deal expecting me to take it due to my youth and inexperience. After failure open failure, I began searching for Nelson and Murdoch in Hell's Kitchen but they weren't there. It seemed like those two were still in law school and wouldn't be arriving for a while. Eventually, I settled on hiring two people who were fresh out of school. I knew that they'd make mistakes but I'd be there to check their work. Hopefully, this would also foster a sense of loyalty within them as they grew with the company. They also passed my spy test as I asked them a series of questions while focusing on their micro-reactions. The first was a girl named Lucy she apparently had been looking for an accounting job for a while but couldn't find one and ended up working at a jack in the box. The second person Marcel had a different experience, however, after getting his degree he was able to get a job at a law firm but ended up being harassed often by one of his co-workers till he quit and met me. I didn't plan on only having these two as my employees but they would do for now. Gwen also met some difficulties like myself when it came to finding a lab. None were available for purchase near the city and the ones she did find were for lease. These leases were also priced obnoxiously high so Gwen did the next best thing and started looking for studios, offices, and warehouses that could be converted into a lab, which was a smart decision made by her. After doing that she finally got summer luck and found a warehouse that also had a small office. It could also easily be converted into a lab. The price was also really good being sold at 1.2 million due to the market crash. I met with everyone once more and we agreed on buying it. Thankfully all the books I've been reading helped as I was able to check over the documents guaranteeing no errors in the properties transfer. After purchasing the property I realized that I was going to need a way to travel back and forth from the city. So I went to the DMV and took the driver's test since I already had the permit. Once that was done I made my next big purchase and got myself a black Dodge Challenger fixing my problem of commuting. While it wasn't good for transporting items it at least allowed me to ride in style. Image. Standing outside the new building I couldn't help but gaze fondly at it. While it was small and not really a lab yet it did have potential. The warehouse was all grey with a wide interior and an attached office on the left hand side. The plot of land even came with a parking lot. Image. Gwen standing next to me had a light smile with a hint of pride knowing she helped acquire this. Seeing this I gently gave her head a pat that she didn't turn away from as she gained a red hue. Realizing that she had let me pat her for too long she gently removed my hand as she turned toward me. Well, what is the plan now? We have the space and some employees. What's next? Peter and Ned called me earlier mentioning that they finished making the games. So that's also another thing done. Marcel is also busy working on the trademarks and checking to see if there are others already with patents who can harm the games. I explained as I pointed at the office on the side which had a simple desk and computer with Marcel hard at work. In the background, you could also see Lucy reading some documents with a smile as she double checked some things. Really that's great. Gwen immediately pulled out her phone and dialed Ned's number to congratulate them. While she did that, I began reminiscing about the steps I had taken. Truly it was amazing to see how far I had come in so little time. To think that I have already been in this world for nearly two months and if I wanted to be exact it has been six weeks since my arrival. I've done much but I can't rest not when things are about to start getting dangerous. Tony should be returning next month and then there's the fact that mutants now know about me. 
This is also why I started accelerating a lot of my plans. Then there's Peter. He mentioned meeting Connors this week and even helped him with the decay rate algorithm. Apparently, they are going to meet again at Oscorp. I've also started getting a bad feeling recently when it comes to Uncle Ben, so I started visiting whenever I could but I couldn't be with him all the time. Sigh. Let's be realistic, there is a high chance that I might not be able to interfere with his accident but that doesn't mean I can't save him. There is however one item I know of that can bring someone back from the brink of death. The Stimpak. Yet if I want to get close enough to use it then I'm going to need a way to escape shields and hydra prying eyes. After some thought, I found my solution as I mentally called out the system. Yes host. Purchase the Stimpak knowledge and Chinese stealth suit from Fallout. Purchasing 80 points deducted. 150 points remaining. Ugh. I grunted for a moment as everything began flowing in but it was much better than previous times. I didn't lose consciousness nor did I fall. Col are you alright? Gwen asked with worry. I suppressed the pain and went back to looking natural as I waved it off. Just got a headache out of nowhere. That's because you're not resting, Col go sit down and I'll start decorating the office space. After saying that she went over and began to carry some boxes with a happy smile. The way women love decorating never ceases to amaze me. Pulling up my phone I began searching online for the material I would need. First of all, I was going to need a chemistry station to make the stimpaks or even a super stimpak. The suit is a bit more difficult needing some complicated materials but still accessible, such as semiconductors, Kevlar, and an energy source to power the invisibility field. Thankfully the power source does not need to be too powerful. With my list of items ready, I gathered my things and let Gwen know that I was leaving for a while before heading off on a shopping trip. Dot. 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 S-H-I-E-L-D. An agent who was busy playing Galaga suddenly got a notification from one of his men on the field. Curious, he took a look and noticed it was one of Fury's priority targets. Some kid who made an app they couldn't crack. He pitied him a bit but knew he had a job to do. With the report in hand, he quickly made his way through many other agents as the sound of radios could be heard in the background. Everyone was hard at work trying to find Stark. They had already taken down a couple of hidden cells from the Ten Rings but hadn't had any luck when it came to the billionaire. Reaching the main platform he pulled out the report and stood tall. Nick Fury looked at the agent in front of him curiously until his eyes met the folder that had a familiar name. Sir this week's report on Caldigan. Next, he handed him the folder that Fury took and started reading as he let the agent know he could leave. This had become a habit for Fury recently as he watched the young man with interest. There was something more to him and he wanted to know what. Refocusing on the logs he noticed that Cole had been quite busy this week. He even encountered a known mutant from Xavier's school. The question here was why? Could he also be a mutant? He made sure to make a mental note of this as he continued reading. The next report mentioned his new employees and building. As well as a couple of other minor details of his day-to-day -day habits. After reading this Fury saw an opportunity. If Cole was hiring then there was a chance for him to plant an agent beside him. With a quick call, he got some of his people to make the arrangements. Caldigan. Just what are you hiding? Chapter 27, Chapter 27 Tinkering and More Points Gwen was almost done decorating the office area when she suddenly heard honking outside. Curious, she along with Marcel and Lucy went to take a look. What awaited them was Cole along with two other burly men unloading you all. Cole what is all this? There were a bunch of random items like flasks, bottles, fabrics, and even boxes with hazard signs. I knew he was planning on buying some work equipment and even placed a special order for powerful computers to act as our servers but these items look very different from what I imagined he'd buy. Well this is for another side project I'm going to start working on. Another project? Now that I think about it he did mention that he wanted to do more than programming is this it? Yeah this is it but I do have some more items on the way from special suppliers. Cole said as if reading my mind. I was going to ask Cole about his side project but soon got cut off. It's a secret he said with his same annoying face at least for now but I promise to tell you everything later on. Alright but don't make me wait too long. I said while smiling back at him before remembering something important also don't forget you're going to help me talk to my parents tonight. Don't worry I'll be there and I'll bring a gift he replied with a gentle smile as he reached out and touched my hair. I thought about removing his hand but hesitated and just let him give me a head pat before he walked away. 
It wasn't till he was completely out of view that I realized what I did and turned bright red. What's wrong with me? Why did I let him do that? I didn't know what to do so I just ran back to finish my decorating to take my mind off it. Buff switch no jutsu. Walking away from Gwen I couldn't help but have a huge smile. Seeing that Gwen accepted my head pat. She was just too cute, especially when she became red. For a while now I had been trying to slightly change our relationship but it was hard to make any progress. She saw me more like a brother needing protection but I've been doing my best to chip that idea away. It wasn't until recently that it seemed like she was beginning to accept my advances. Besides that, it was overall slow but progress is still progress. Entering the warehouse I looked at the items I had on hand. They were splayed around unorganized and I went straight to work. It hurt seeing the area messy due to a small side effect of NZT being OCD. With everything in its place, I began cataloging what I had while also making some notes on what was missing. Everything seemed to be here for the stealth suit and I had enough supply to make a couple of stimpaks or just one super stimpak. I was only lacking some of the more heavy machinery needed to start building robots. I had also ordered more material for not just the NZT but even the temporary cue to alleviate the symptoms. A much needed item to alleviate my morning headaches. Kneeling down with a knife in hand I was about to start opening some more boxes until the system made a notification sound as it appeared in front of me. The spider has bitten someone who originally had no powers. Their destiny forever changed as they take the fate of another plus 500 points. In response Peter Parker's fate has now been changed as his destiny weaves with another plus 1000 points. Available points 1650. What the hell? So the spider that escaped actually bit someone? And am I just passively earning points now? Those points also amazed me 1500 in just one go. Maybe I should just let the spiders loose in the city? The greed for more points almost overtook me but I shook it off. The real question was who did it bite for me to earn those points? I even wanted to go searching for them but I knew it wouldn't be easy. Thinking about it did I even need to go looking for said person? It's only a matter of time before they end up exposing themselves anyway. Just got to watch the news for a websinger who isn't Peter. Getting back to work I gathered up some of the needed material. The main one is the full Kevlar bodysuit I purchased. Next, I brought out the semiconductors and a couple of other electrical pieces. Such as fiber optics and electrical wiring that would be woven throughout the suit to connect with the conductors as they radiated the field. The only thing missing from the suit visually was the classic orange mask. For that, I brought out a sheet of clear plastic that I shaped using a heat gun. I also replaced the classic orange color with a dark automotive tint adding on to the stealthy appearance while also making it hard to see my features. With those things done, I brought out the smallest car battery I could find and outfitted it to the best of my ability. Stepping back I looked down at the stealth suit in admiration. It wasn't perfect and was even a little clunky compared to the original but I would fix that later on, as for now, it would serve its purpose. Everything was mostly done by this point. I just needed to use some of the electrical parts I purchased to create the effect of reflecting light through the field the suit illuminates. Once that was done then I would have an actual stealth suit, sadly this project won't be completed today, I thought as I checked the time. Looks like I need to get home and at least make myself presentable for Gwen's family, I doubt her dad would take me seriously if I showed up in jeans and a hoodie. Before I left I made sure to take the stealth suit and a couple of other items as well. I didn't want SHILD or Hydra getting their hands on these things and I doubt a simple camera would stop them. I mentally made a mental note after this to invest in better security as well. Perhaps a bubble turret from Fallout so they know I mean business. Dot. 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 Gwen's home was deeper in the city compared to mine and was placed in a relatively clean and high class area of New York, which is surprising to see considering how dirty the streets usually are. Glancing down at my outfit I was wearing a regular black suit with a red tie, something I had purchased a while ago for formal meetings. I made a light smile recognizing this as a good purchase. The suit even made me appear a bit more filled in and not my usual skinny self. Once I was at her door I checked myself one last time. In one hand was a bouquet of flowers while there was a cake in the other. I knew I was overdoing it with this since this was just supposed to be akin to a business meeting. However I wanted to make a good impression and knew the best way to look good to her dad was by making her mom happy. Like they say, a happy wife, a happy life. With a knock on the door I began to hear movement inside the home as a man opened the door. 
He was around two inches taller than me at six feet one inch and was in a police officer uniform. He gave me a quick glance as he examined my features and clothing. Can I help you? Yes, Gwen invited me to come over today I said with a straight posture as I tried to equal him as he sized me up. She did mention someone coming over today. All right follow me in. Walking in we passed by lots of family photos at the entrance before we entered a modestly decorated home. Chapter 28 Chapter 28 Meeting Gwen's Family Gwen was seated with her mum and three brothers in the dining room, making them a family of six relatively large by New York standards. She seemed to notice my arrival, quickly standing to welcome me in as she brought me over and began introducing her family members. First, she pointed to a mature woman who looked exactly like her but older. Nice to meet you dear, it's not often that Gwen brings a friend over. You can just call me Helen she was a warm person who had a friendly personality. Quite the opposite of her husband I thought as I felt the man's eyes on my back. Gwen then pointed over at the three boys on their phones those three are my younger brothers with Philip being the oldest followed by Howard and Simon. They didn't really seem to be interested in me as they went straight back to their devices and talked about what happened at their school. Gwen's father soon took his seat as well beside his wife. You also already met my dad earlier. Looking back at the man I realized I hadn't introduced myself yet and felt this was a good time too. Nice to meet you sir, I'm Colin I go to school with Gwen. Ah, I also brought gifts. With that said I handed Gwen's parents the flowers and cake as I sat down. Helen looked happy to receive the gifts as she placed the flowers in the empty vase at the table's center. Her father George on the other hand gave me a more narrowed look. These gifts are a bit much, aren't they? I wonder what your intentions could be. He didn't outright say I was after Gwen but everyone got his meaning. Helen nudged him a bit George don't be like that just say thank you. The brothers giggled at this while Gwen seemed a bit bashful at her father's comment. After this Gwen's brothers began cutting the cake and set the plates, eager to eat dessert having already eaten dinner before my arrival. I hope you don't mind me asking but how did you become friends with Gwen? Helen asked as she tried to start a new conversation. This question brought me back to when I first arrived in this world and inherited the memories of a bullied version of myself. I didn't want to bring up those events as they weren't truly mine. It would also lower their image of me. As a person who couldn't defend themselves. So I opted for a different story. Well, Gwen here would pester me off and on schoolwork and the importance of studying. Things just happened to develop from there on. Gwen laughed at this remembering all the times she mentioned my grades that only began to change recently because of NZT. That does sound like Gwen she has always been diligent like her father both Gwen and her dad smiled at this taking it as a compliment. Well Col tell us about yourself, do you have a job or any hobbies? George asked, wanting to know more about the kind of people his daughter surrounds herself with. I saw this as a chance to bring up my business ventures and see what his views on it would be. His reaction should also give us an idea of how he'll react to Gwen. I actually do have a job. Oh really where do you work? Helen also seemed interested in this. She obviously knew her daughter worked at Oscorp but she wanted to know what a normal job was like for a teenager her daughter's age. However, her expectations of a classic high school job like Subway ended as quickly as it came. Well I don't work for a company but actually started a business along with some friends. George slowly lowered his fork as he heard this, not really expecting to hear anything good. Young entrepreneurs come to New York all the time thinking they are going to be the next big thing but more often than not fail. As a police officer, he has seen this time and time again with a good portion of the homeless having once been entrepreneurs themselves. Things were even worse this year with the market crash and the disappearance of Tony Stark did not help to alleviate the issue. That's a pretty risky decision you're making, don't you want to go to college? Helen asked with some concern. No, not really and it actually isn't that bad. We have actually been successful so far with our product being well liked in the online market. I believe Gwen even shared the app I created with you, Mr. Stacy. George was taken aback by this as only one app came to mind, Spectre. He did a fast turn as he looked at Gwen who just nodded with a smile as if saying yup he made that. By chance did you make Spectre? He asked wanting more confirmation than just a head nod from his daughter. Yes that would be me, how have you liked the app so far? I said with confidence knowing the conversation was now heading in the right direction. It's been great and is already used by most of our officers. Even my superiors were asking about it. Who would have thought it was made by a high schooler? 
George honestly smiled at this since it did make their work a lot simpler especially when cases involved cybercrime, which was something the departments were starting to get used to as technology became better. It has even helped in preventing a recent cyber attack against the police force. Helen looked at her husband in confusion lost on the subject. He noticed this as well and proceeded to explain the app in detail to her. By the end of their conversation, I could tell that she now saw me in a new light. If my system had a favorability option then the notifications would be going non-stop right now. Too bad it only gets points by putting me in dangerous situations. Whoever made that thing must be a sick person who enjoys suffering. That's incredible Cole you must have worked really hard to accomplish that. Helen commented with genuine admiration. Thank you miss and I did really put some effort well not me exactly but UNSC programmers in fact we are also in the middle of expanding right now. With a new building, workers, and even new apps that will be released once we have more computers to act as servers. George, taking an interest in the conversation's direction, began inquiring about the kind of apps we were making, hoping it would also be useful for his department. However, he was disappointed to discover that these apps were just games, though he recognized the potential of such a direction. How many friends did you make your company with? Helen asked, thinking back to what I mentioned earlier. Gwen glanced at me giving the okay as this was the right time to add her in with their opinions being good so far. Well, I actually started this with three friends Peter and Ned from school. As for the last person, well, they are right here next to me. The air froze as even Gwen's siblings pulled their attention away from their devices. Gwen, who was beginning to feel the pressure, chose to speak first before any questions came her way. It's true. I've been helping Cole for a while now. That's why I gave you the app for the department and asked for Joe's business number, I was advertising and most recently scouting for a company building. Her parents were still stunned but you could see a hint of pride in their eyes, especially her father. Gwen had always asked his approval on things even when it came to working at Oscorp, so it came as a surprise to see her do something like this. He even wanted to scold her a bit but he couldn't bring himself to be upset. She was being responsible and mature in her own way. Building a company and venturing out for buildings are far beyond what most people achieve. Looking at Col, he examined the young man once more. As a cop, he had gained an eye for people and had been evaluating the boy since he arrived. From what he could see, Col appeared quite normal and well mannered, but his gut was telling him that there was something more with this boy. Now, with the knowledge of Col running his own company, it more than confirmed his gut feeling as he assumed this was it. What kind of job will my daughter have working for you? If she was going to be working with this boy he at least needed to know that she at least had a respectable position. Well I plan on giving her a lab in the future. George made a confused expression as he wondered why a software company needed a lab. This thought was also shared with the rest of the family as the image of a lab didn't really match the one they had of my company so far. What do you mean by lab? My programming skills are quite good as you can tell by Spectre but my real talent lies in technology, so I plan on making other things that aren't apps in the future. George doubted this while urging me to stick with what works to avoid risk. I kindly accepted his advice but remained resolute in my choice. Will she also be getting paid for her work? Yes, in fact, I've already wired the money to my friends' accounts earlier. They just haven't checked their banks yet. Gwen's eyes widened at this. You did? But Cole shouldn't you wait a bit we are still working on the budget she pulled out her phone and began checking. Yeah it's fine I already ran the numbers and the company won't be damaged by it, plus it's about time you guys got paid. Gwen dropped her phone as soon as her bank information pulled up and was quickly taken by her mother, as she and the rest of the family counted the zeros. 100,000. I wanted to give you guys more but the finances wouldn't allow it, though that should change once the games hit the market. Gwen just sat down frozen. She never really cared for money and it was never her goal but even she couldn't ignore it when it was right in front of her. Once the family calmed down a bit they began to ask me more about my company and goals. From this point on the atmosphere had changed into a good mood. Gwen and her mother even agreed to go shopping together the next day. It eventually became late at night before I knew it and ended up staying past one before I was finally let go. Chapter 29 Chapter 29 Stealth Suit and Honesty the very next day I went straight back to the company warehouse in a stellar mood. I thought about how meeting Gwen's family ended up being a success, even making the good impression I had hoped for. Gwen was also extremely happy at school as she practically glowed no longer as trained by secrets. However, it was time to focus. 
I had things to work on. Arriving at the warehouse I noticed a couple of you alls also waiting outside as they rolled down large boxes, which could only mean one thing. Our computers for the game servers had arrived. They quickly brought everything inside and left once I signed off on everything. All we needed to do was set them up but before that I'd check for any signs of spyware. Once the workers were all gone I went to my car and brought out the stealth suit I laid it out on the table and began working some more on the circuitry as I examined the energy levels and strength of the field it created. Everything seemed to be in working order just needing some finishing touches but it was at least good enough to test. Stripping out of my clothing I gently put on the suit not wanting to break it and made a couple of mental notes along the way. For one it needed some padding and a softer material inside for comfortability. Moving around a bit I noticed it was also stiff on the joints but there wasn't much I could do on that part, unless I changed it into sections instead of just one piece. Unfortunately that would take a lot of time compared to what I made now. Next was the final test. I went into the office and took a mirror the girls used for their makeup as I activated the suit vanishing instantaneously. The field radiating from the suit worked perfectly refracting light away from myself. Making me appear invisible to the human eye. Granting me a way to avoid the prying eyes of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra. With the suit completed, I went back to the work area and set up a makeshift chemistry station. Surprisingly the process of making a stimpack was much easier than I had imagined. It made sense if you thought about it since even people from the wastelands make stimpaks. The materials needed were even easily obtainable like antiseptics, glucose, and electrolytes to name a few. So after a few minutes, I had a complete super stimpack in my hand good enough to save someone from the brink of death. My only worry was not being able to test it. I should have been happy at the moment but I still couldn't remove that slight amount of worry in my heart. That all this preparation was meaningless and Ben would still die. I knew this was a real possibility. I didn't see Uncle Ben all the time, so there wasn't a guarantee of me being present in his final moments. That's when I realized something crucial. I may not be with Ben all the time but there is one person destined to be there at his final moment. Peter. Realizing that Peter would be my best bet in saving Ben. I knew I had to give him the stimpack so that he could use it at the right moment. The only problem was explaining. I sat down and contemplated sharing some of the truth with my friends. This was a good opportunity to let them in on some of my goals especially with Gwen already asking about my projects. With a quick call, I notified each one to come over to the warehouse. Mentioning I had something important to discuss. Buff switch no jutsu. Peter had just gotten back home in an extremely good mood. Things had been going amazing ever since he got bitten by a spider at Oscorp. At first, he was worried about dying but instead, he got a six pack. Yet it didn't stop there as he discovered more and more abilities as time went by. Super strength, speed, agility, durability a sort of sixth sense, invisibility, and sometimes sparks of electricity emit from his hands though he still has problems controlling it. Then there was the company he and his friends were building together. Cole had been the main one to get it started as he released an app that changed his views on coding. Not wanting to be left behind he and Ned got to work and were able to finish three of the games Cole suggested they make. Life just seemed to be on an endless high that he didn't want to end. He even got to meet Dr. Connors a co-worker of his father. They had even started working together on a formula his dad made. In fact, Peter was about to head over again to Oscorp at least until he got a message from Cole mentioning an emergency meeting. Ah, did I and Ned mess up the app? Peter assumed the worst and quickly got his things together as he left his house and took a cab outside the city. Everyone arrived fairly quickly after seeing that I mentioned an emergency meeting. They all assumed the worst and urged me to quickly tell them the news. Okay, I get it chill, just come and follow me with a quick stride I led them into the warehouse as Lucy and Marcel watched on with curiosity. Once inside I had them sit down in some foldable chairs I had set up earlier. Alright, Cole can you please tell us what happened? Gwen asked while squeezing the hems of her skirt. I actually want to talk to you guys about a couple of things but first I'm happy to tell you all that the computers are here so that means the games will be launched soon. Everyone smiled at this with Ned and Peter High giving each other as they couldn't wait to see the games on the market. Once things were settled down I brought up another announcement you guys have gotten your first payment, I said with a smile. Excited to see how they would react. Gwen already knew about the payment and watched Peter and Ned expectantly as they checked their bank information. 100,000. X2. 
I can't wait to tell my grandma. We can pay off our house with this or even go on a cruise. Ned was ecstatic wanting to call his grandmother right away but we told him to wait till after the meeting. I don't know what to say Cole Peter replied humbly. You don't have to say anything, this is what you guys earned. I took a pause so they could calm down before continuing the meeting. As for my last announcement, I think it's time to tell you all something about myself, I am a genius. They just sat there not knowing what to say as the room became awfully quiet. Um we already know Col I've never seen anyone code like you before Peter said unsure of why I brought it up. I just made a smile at Peter. When I say genius I don't mean just programming. The truth is that I am probably one of the smartest people on the planet. Hearing this, Gwen just covered her face and started giggling. Ned even took out his phone and showed me a picture of my grades with a smile. In the end, they couldn't help it and all started laughing. Damn these guys. In response I started stripping, throwing off my hoodie and jeans. Col what are you doing? Gwen squealed as red as a tomato. Ned and Peter just looked at me and shook their heads. We don't swing that way B what are you wearing underneath Ned asked mid-sentence. Gwen finally uncovered her eyes and began to wonder the same thing. With my clothing gone, they had a clear view of a black bodysuit covering my body. There were wires and pieces of tech visible in some parts as well. Next, I put on the hood and hooked in the visor that hid my face, adding a unique look to the already strange suit. Is that a Comic Con outfit? Ned asked, hoping that my big announcement was us going to Comic Con. I didn't bother answering his question and activated my suit, already knowing that this would be enough of an answer. Col is gone. Gwen was panicking alongside Ned as they nearly fell out of their seats. One moment their friend was stripping and suddenly vanished the next. It almost felt like the plot of a bad horror movie. Peter on the other hand froze in shock. Unlike the other two, he was aware of Cole still being in the room. Adding a sense of familiarity as he thought back to all the times he disappeared. Did he get bitten too? Ah, should I tell him? No I'm not gone I said while reappearing in fact, I never left. You see this suit is something I created after school. But that's impossible. Not even the government has something like that Ned claimed without hesitation. Yeah, but I do. I told you all I'm smart. Gwen was still in disbelief as she tried to calm herself down and asked the question bothering her. Then why are you so bad at school? It just didn't make sense. Here he could make an item straight out of science fiction but can't solve y equals mx plus b. Ned and Peter wondered the same thing as all eyes turned back toward me. I didn't want to show I was too smart. You all may not know it but there are a lot of dangerous groups in this world, so in the end it was for my safety. Gwen didn't seem to fully understand but my point came across with Peter. Ever since he got his powers he began to worry about becoming a lab rat to the government, so hearing that his friend shared a similar fear gave him a sense of belonging like he wasn't alone. Can I wear it? Ned asked skipping everything I said as he was more interested in the suit itself. Hey, I don't have one in your size but I'll make you one later if you want. Yes. The room was silent once more as they took their seats. It was just so much in a short amount of time and they didn't know what to think. It was like knowing someone and discovering that you really didn't know them. Yet you couldn't be mad at them because they had a legit reason to do so. While I was getting my clothes back on they talked to one another until finally having Gwen ask me the main thing on their mind. Is this what you plan on selling? They seemed nervous and I knew why. They didn't want this type of thing getting into military hands. Growing up they respected the military especially Peter due to Uncle Ben's influence as a veteran. However, they weren't cheap and knew everything wasn't sunshine and rainbows with this group. Bad things happened and our government wasn't exactly innocent as they constantly involved themselves in foreign affairs. The stealth suit? No, I don't plan on it. They sighed with relief but it was cut short by my next comment. But I do plan on working with the military in the future. Cull you can't. They'll use your tools as weapons. You'll also become a target, just look at Stark, isn't that guy dead because of it Gwen was growing emotional and simply began imagining the worst case scenarios. She even got up and hugged me in the process. I knew this would be a problem eventually but it was better to handle it now than to let it all blow up in my face later. The tighter she hugged me the more I began to think back on my choice. Realistically it was the easiest way to power with lots of benefits and easy connections. It also helped strengthen the world for the troubles to come. Please promise me you won't make weapons for the military. 
Looking down at her face I could see her eyes water a little as she held my clothing tight. It was moments like these where NZT became painful to bear. As my mind memorized her worried appearance perfectly. Looking behind Gwen I noticed that Peter and Ned shared her opinion and looked uncomfortable. As they had a downcast look. Sigh. I want to listen to them but I just can't there are some things that must be done and this is one of them. Returning Gwen's hug I responded. I'm sorry guys but this is something I have to do and it's not just military either. I want to fill the world with my inventions and create a new age. From medicine, infrastructure, energy, and even space. I want to see my name written down in the history books. My declaration took them by surprise as they imagined me actually achieving such a thing. Gwen was still reluctant saying I could still do that without making weapons but I remained firm. I promise none of you will ever have to make weapons that would be done solely by me. In fact together we could even revolutionize medicine as we know it. I added as I tried to pacify the pacifists. They glared at me for some time but gave up seeing that I wouldn't back down. A light pressure also seemed to be released from them knowing they wouldn't make weapons. Seeing them like this also helped me relax knowing none of my plans wouldn't be disturbed. There was just too much money to be made. Stark stock should also be dropping once Tony announces that he's giving up weapon manufacturing. So my finances will continue to grow. Glancing down I saw that Gwen was still holding on to me like a koala and decided to tease her a bit to ease the tension. I hugged her a little tighter as I sat down with her in my arms. Ah, what are you doing Dagon? Haha, <laughs> I loved the way she said my last name in her small fits of annoyance. You looked so comfortable that I thought I'd let you stay like this a bit longer I teased while putting my fingers through her hair. Turning red she jumped up and left the warehouse as fast as she could. Haha, <laughs> I may have gone too far. Ned laughed as well before saying just don't fall to the dark side of the force before exiting the warehouse as he smiled at his bank account. Now it was just me and Peter who looked like he had something to get off his chest. Which was fine with me, I still needed to hand him the super stimpack after all. Chapter 30 Chapter 30 Peter's Confusion Watching Peter the first knew I needed to give him time and that's what I did, as we both sat there silently in the now empty warehouse. Thankfully it didn't take long for Peter to make his choice as all his anxiety left and was replaced by determination. Col I have something to confess but, ah, I don't know what to say. Here I'll just show you. Standing from his chair he walked forward before vanishing as if he was erased from existence. It was basically a carbon copy of my earlier presentation except he didn't need to strip. Fascinating, just how is your body doing that walking over I began to inspect the spot where Peter vanished from. I had seen him do this before but having a clear view with time to inspect was still rewarding. My knowledge of stealth had increased leaps and bounds after buying fallout armors and stealth armor. So I could be considered one of the best in this field among others. Mind reappearing? I asked wanting to have a better view of the process. Peter appeared in front of me with a confused expression. He couldn't help but question this whole situation. Shouldn't Cole be surprised right now? I just vanished like he did but without a suit? Instead? He's looking at me like it's another Tuesday. Col why aren't you surprised by all this? Hearing him I realized that I got so lost in checking out his ability that I forgot to fake my amazement. Thankfully my mind found a solution instantly. Haha <laughs> well that's because this isn't my first time seeing you disappear. Peter jumped back in shock as if he had all his secrets exposed. W what? Dude I've seen you disappear at least two times so far at school. Why do you think I built a stealth suit? I made it after watching you disappear the last part obviously wasn't true but it gave me the opportunity to make an excuse for it. Peter's eyes widened at the last comment as he saw me in a completely new light. He wasn't sure if he should be panicking about the fact that I saw him disappear at school or if he should be amazed at his friend's intelligence. In the end, he chose to just take his seat. You were really serious about being a one of a kind genius. To think that you would make a suit based on my powers and succeed. I couldn't help but feel a bit of embarrassment from his praise, especially when I didn't really invent this technology but hey who's gonna know? If you think that's amazing then you're going to be amazed by some of the things I'll bring out in the future. Actually wait a moment. I walked over to my boxes and opened the one that said fragile as I removed the super stim pack. Peter looked curiously at the item as I walked it over and handed it to him. What is this lifting it he began to inspect it all around but he still couldn't find what was special about it. It's a new invention of mine I call it a stimpack with that one in particular being a super stimpack. 
you can just think of it as a super medicine that can heal someone in critical condition. Peter almost dropped it after hearing those words but his spider sense reacted as he caught it in the air. I don't want to hold this thing anymore here, take it back Peter felt nervous just holding the thing. He couldn't imagine what it's worth. Lifting my hand I just placed it between us. Nah, Peter you can keep that one. He didn't know what to say and I could tell he was uncomfortable but I wasn't going to take no for an answer. Peter just think of it as a gift, I can make more whenever I want so don't worry about it. Peter knew not to say more and just gave me a smile as he got some bubble wrap and placed it in his backpack. Just promise me you'll keep it with you at all times you never know. Haha, <laughs> alright, I will thanks so much Col I mean it. I just gave him a nod in response. Now let's get back to your power to disappear. Any idea how you got it? I asked like a perfect actor as I showed curiosity at his ability. You remember how something bit me in Oscorp? I took a thoughtful pose for a moment as I made it look like I recalled the moment. Yeah, that time we lie think it was a spider. You see after that I checked my bite and it looked exactly like the ones that spiders give. If that wasn't proof enough. It also gave me a bunch of spider abilities. Now this is getting interesting. I had only seen his invisibility and spider sense. So I was really curious about what else it could have given him. I don't just disappear dude but I can climb walls. I'm super strong, fast, agile and I even got electricity in my hands Peter spoke with glee as he explained his abilities one after the other no longer holding any reservations. I however got lost in thought as he explained these abilities because these were all powers I was already familiar with. In fact, all these powers came from the last Spider-Man movie I saw before ending up in this world. They were Miles Morales' spider powers. Quite lucky of Peter now that I think about it. The kid did have some really good abilities that made him different. That's amazing Peter. I wonder what they put into those spiders? Peter suddenly showed an annoyed expression when I mentioned them. I know. I thought the same thing and even went to Connors to ask about them but it turns out someone stole them all. Can you believe it, man? I really hate thieves Peter complained as he now had very little chance of learning more. Oh f sorry Peter but I needed them more. Speaking of which, I still need to research the little buggers. Too bad this makeshift lab doesn't have everything I need. Wait. A lab with everything I need? Would Oscorp have all the right facilities for me to not only inspect the spiders but even make my first enhancement? If they could manipulate the genes of spiders and lizards then they must have some legit tech there. Just the kind of stuff I need to make the 24th chromosome. Oscorp sounded like an amazing place to break into right about now. I already had a stealth suit along with master programming skills to restrict their security, so most of the preparation was already done. Looking back at Peter the first noticed that he was still ranting on about thieves being the worst in society. Hey Peter if you got the powers of a spider then where's your webbing? This question caught him off guard as he looked down. No webs, I wish I did have some. Then why don't you make your own? I asked hoping he'd invent it for me. I tried to the other day but it was a failure. I'm not like you Cole I can't do something like that I'm just me. I didn't like the way he was speaking but then I remembered that this Peter was still a kid at the end of the day. He had lots of anxiety and low self esteem at least before he took up the mantle. Peter, what kind of guy can make 3 games and earn 100k in his first paycheck? Peter smiled knowing I was trying to cheer him up but I could tell it still wasn't enough. You know there was once a very wise green alien who said that there is do or do not there is no try. That quote however pulled his heartstrings with it being his favorite movie. Fine I get it Col I'll just do it then, no need to bring Star Wars into this, Peter complained as he gathered his things to leave. Haha <laughs> but don't you know Peter this is where the fun begins. He just slapped his face at the comment not wanting to hear any more references for the rest of his evening. With Peter gone, I thought back to Oscorp. They really seemed to have everything I needed from the quantum computer to even gene technology. The only problem was that he didn't know exactly how big the computer was. I might just have to give up on the computer for now, a shame I really wanted to use it for an AI like Cortana. Although it's not like it's the only option I could always copy what the military did in my original world and buy thousands of playstations to make a supercomputer. Though it does feel cheap so it'll probably buy some computer knowledge. Nevertheless, it looks like I need to make a little trip to Oscorp. To make the CH-24 but before that I better get these computers checked for bugs and set them up. Chapter 31, Chapter 31 A Stroll in Oscorp
getting inside Oscorp was pretty simple, only needing me to hack the doors to enter. The problem however came afterwards. There were guards and cameras stationed practically everywhere. It seemed that they had upped their security in response to losing the spiders. Too bad it won't help them at all, I thought as I glanced down at my invisible body. This stealth suit really was a great purchase, making this way easier than it should be. Walking in I just treated this place like a regular park stroll. The only time I needed to be cautious was when guards were nearby. I may have been invisible but I still made sound so it was something to look out for. I also took the time to check out some of the labs on the way but didn't find anything interesting. It seemed like they moved everything of importance to another location. Reaching the end of a hall I finally found the section I needed to get to. Genetics. The door to this lab was a bit tougher to crack than the others with added security and alarms placed on it, but it was eventually opened allowing me to enter the room safely. Looking around it looked similar to the other labs thus far. Clean white walls and floors, sanitizer could also be smelled in the air. It was basically what you would expect from this sort of place. Now let's check what kind of equipment they have. Moving further inside I began to see some things that I needed. A gene editor, a synthesizer, and some other equipment I didn't recognize but would figure out. My eyes suddenly noticed a particular piece of equipment, a genetic analyzer. Now this was something I needed to use, I still had no idea on whether or not I had the X gene so this was the perfect opportunity. However, before I started anything I made sure to use pre-prepared malware to loop the camera footage. I didn't need a bunch of guards running in here just because of the camera getting footage of floating equipment. With that done I went over and got a syringe as I pulled out a sample of my blood and put it into the machine. Next, I set it up to search for mutations within the DNA. After around an hour the machine had finally finished as I got the results and there it was. The gene responsible for one of the world's most hated groups of people. The X gene. It was inactive at the moment but I knew my X gene was practically guaranteed to activate with all the enhancements I planned on giving myself. From what I remembered in the comics the X gene was prone to activation under stressful environments. I couldn't imagine anything more stressful than a Spartan procedure, so the chances really were high. There was obviously good that came with the gene-like superpowers but it came with so many problems. Let's just hope that it doesn't activate after taking in the 24th chromosome. I'm just not ready for that bag of problems yet. Walking away from that machine I went over and began the process of creating and editing the chromosome. It was fascinating from beginning to end as I truly experienced just how much effort they put into creating it. The chromosome was near perfect. It improved the body's overall function. Except for one slight problem. If you had some sort of mental problem or issue then the chances of said person becoming a monster was basically guaranteed. Thankfully I don't have that sort of problem so it's mostly safe I'd say. Around 98% safe. Finishing its design I suddenly thought back to my friends. I bet they'd love something like this. It makes you immune to all sickness and disease and pushes your body to its peak condition. With that thought in mind, I prepped the machine to produce 20 vials. This was something great for regular people like Ned and Gwen and I wasn't selfish enough to keep everything for myself. Plus I did go against all of them and decided to go down the path of military technology so maybe this would appease them somewhat. The only person I was hesitant about was Peter and how it would affect him. You see the main function of the 24th chromosome is its ability to repair DNA, which in Peter's case is quite dangerous due to his DNA being mangled with the spiders. I already saw this as a problem before coming here and took out a couple of hair strands belonging to him. As well as a couple of samples I got from the spiders in my house. I still needed to test those spiders after all and chose to just do it all in one go. Heading to the center of the lab I found a huge familiar hologram. Floating in the center of it was an image of a lizard and rat with broken DNA chains saying failure. Clearly, Connors and Peter were still working on it but from what I could see they were already getting close. I even thought about deleting all their progress but who knows what kind of repercussions that would cause. Connors might just inject himself with a less perfect version and become a worse monster. So I left it alone. Walking forward I inserted everything inside. The machine quickly got to work as it tested the combination and let's just say that what I saw next amazed me. It's perfect, just perfect, down to the last minute detail. The chromosome didn't straight up kill everything like I expected it would. No, it fixed what the process damaged as it truly integrated and became one, almost like a new species. 
All the spiders and Peter's DNA didn't just combine but became something more. Seeing this I removed Peter's DNA and submitted my own instead hoping for the same result. Only for the test to end up drastically different. The DNA was ripped to shreds and surprisingly it wasn't the 24th chromosome but the spiders that caused it. Checking the computer's log I found the problem. Apparently, Peter had a natural born mutation that made him extremely compatible with all the spiders. While the CH24 just cleaned up the leftover problems and enhanced everything else. Without a mutation, a regular person would end up like Connors and become a monster. Instantly shattering my chances of spider powers unless I invested time into making my own mutation. I was upset at this but not for very long. There were plenty of other things for me to use in the future and the spiders were just one of many. Instead of dwelling on what I can't have it's better to focus is on what I can. Glancing back at the results I thought of Peter. This may not have been good for me but I could use this for him. With that goal, I produced another serum that had all the spiders combined along with CH24. Spider-Man was guaranteed quite the upgrade in the future. I even shivered imagining it. Just how many powers would the guy get with this? Once everything was done I cleaned up the room and computers till it was spotless with no traces of me ever being here. Making my exit as I went straight to the warehouse. Dot. 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 Puffs which. Charles Xavier was a mutant gifted with vast telepathic powers, a specialist in mutant biology and sociology, and the founder of the uncanny X-Men as Professor X with immense commitment, his life had become dedicated to fulfilling his dream of mutants and humans coexisting peacefully. He had even transformed his family's ancestral home into a sanctuary for mutants to train and learn about their abilities. To aid himself in this endeavor of helping other mutants he created the Cerebro. An advanced computer designed to enhance his mental abilities to discover the location of mutants all across the globe. This machine turned out to be a great success as new mutants were constantly discovered and given guidance. However, today didn't seem to be one of those days. Professor, were you able to find him? Aura asked hesitantly. It had already been a couple of days since Jean's brought up her strange encounter. Yet throughout all this time, they have not been able to find him. It's hard to say. She raised her eyebrow as this was not the usual no he responded with. The professor took a moment to clear his thoughts on what exactly he found. This coal has a very strange mind, almost like it's constantly trying to hide itself as it is covered in a fog. Now it's no surprise as to why I couldn't find him last time. This had been one of the most difficult children to find thus far for Charles. There were even moments where he thought he found Cole just for his mind to become clouded as he drew close. So he is a mutant, I can't imagine a normal human having that sort of ability. Charles wanted to agree with Storm but held himself back. There's a high chance but I think it's better if we go and meet him. Notify Jean and her friends. Cole on the other hand was completely unaware of the massive trouble called the X-Men as he slipped out of Oscorp. Chapter 32, Chapter 32 First Enhancement once I was at the warehouse I made sure to lock all the doors and block the windows. As I hid everything important in a secret compartment I had made. It even had a neat trap that triggered if opened the wrong way as it would blow up everything within. This wasn't the only trap in place as I had rigged multiple traps throughout the room and even back at my home. One small mistake and kaboom. It was all I could do at the moment before installing more security measures throughout the property. Next, I went and took an empty syringe as I loaded the CH-24 inside. Well here goes nothing and please don't turn me into a monster I said to myself as I pushed the needle into my skin and injected the almost clear substance. There wasn't going to be some dramatic effect like with Captain America. Growing from a frail boy to a chat. The CH-24 required time to flow through the system. So I went and fell asleep with an alarm to wake me up in an hour. Hoping and praying that I was still me once I woke up. One eternity later. Ring ring. In my deep sleep, I began to hear the familiar sound of my phone's ringtone but there was something wrong with it. It sounded extremely loud like small speakers. Reaching out I tried turning it off but felt something crack underneath my finger as the ringtone suddenly turned off. Strange what is this sand texture? My eyelids opened as I saw my finger stabbed into my phone. That's when the realization hit me. I stood up almost instantly as I looked around the room and then back at myself. I'm still me, I exclaimed while searching for any monstrous changes. With my humanity confirmed I focused on thoroughly examining my body. The changes were subtle and not as explosive as with Steve Rogers but they were there. 
My body had filled in a bit with some muscle definition and my height also seemed to increase by one inch making me six feet the height of legends. With my evolution confirmed I looked down at my now destroyed phone in regret. Noting I needed a new phone and to watch how I touched things from now on. I recognized the need to test my strength but what to use. With that question in mind, I began looking for the heaviest item in the room. Looking around a bit I noticed the computer servers but decided against it. Until my eyes caught sight of my car parked inside. It was more than 3000 pounds making it the perfect scale. Walking over I checked around the vehicle looking for the best spot to grab. In the end, I chose to go behind the car as I placed my hands underneath. Well let's see just how strong I am now. With that, I held tight and slowly began to lift the back of the vehicle. Surprisingly it was not to walk in the park like I had expected. Kriak. Ugh. Come on a bit more I began pushing myself even more as I slowly lifted the end of the car above my head. In doing so I felt my body strain as parts of my skin began to tear only to heal as if it didn't happen. Confirming the existence of my healing factor. Reaching my limit I slowly lowered it down and fell with my back on the floor. Huff huff ha ha I did it. Glancing back at the vehicle I began calculating the weight. That had to be around 1000 pounds, maybe more. It's still pretty far off from Captain America but it's a start. The chance of me growing stronger is also relatively high considering I took this serum while being skinny. I just need to eat some more and put in some exercise, maybe even learn how to fight in the process. Definitely something to look into now that I have a healthy body and a sharp mind because of NZT. Wait a second, I haven't had a pill in over 12 hours. Why don't I have a headache? Looking at my reflection through the car mirror I saw that my eyes weren't dilated. So I really wasn't on the drug anymore yet there was no headache. My mind even felt sharp despite not having the drug. Haha, <laughs> I don't even need to make the cure anymore. To think that CH24 even fixed that for me. Reaching into my pocket I popped another pill of NZT. Enhancing my mental faculties as I began to analyze the situation until I reached a conclusion. The CH24 did in fact cure me and would continue to do so. All because of the regeneration factor I gained. Basically, all the damage NZT causes to my mind and nervous system just gets repaired right after. It's also why I'm able to exert so much strength. My healing factor repairs the damage my strength causes. Naturally lowering my body's limiter in response. I couldn't wait to share this stuff with my friends and wanted to let them know to come visit again later in the day. With my phone broken I was unable to call them, so I went to my laptop and was about to send them a message when I suddenly heard something outside. My strength wasn't the only increase I experienced after the injection but my senses did as well, so hearing from far distances became quite simple. I got a bad feeling. Dot. 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 Buff switch. The X-Men were no strangers when it came to meeting prospective students for their school but this time felt different. Usually, the professor would only send a couple of X-Men to bring a found mutant. This time however was different as he also decided to come along. This drew in a greater amount of curiosity as they stood outside the warehouse with a sign saying Dagon Technologies. Rogue looked at the sign curiously as she whispered to Jean Hey this company has his name on it, do you think it could be his? Jean didn't respond as she also checked out the sign. Cole hadn't mentioned this the last time they talked so it also came as a surprise to her but there was something else bothering her. Dagon Technologies. Just where had she seen that name? There are so many companies in the world so it is hard to keep track of them but she knows she's seen this one before. It even had a nice ring to it making it more familiar compared to others. Kitty who hadn't spoken so far suddenly walked over to the sign as she took multiple thinking poses and stuck out her hips. Wait isn't this the company that made the app Kurt always talks about? Something about it blocking ads on anime sites. Hearing this both Jean and Rogue suddenly remembered it. In fact, they also used this app as it made using the web much safer. You're right it is the same app but doesn't that mean Cole made it? Rogue asked herself, seeing the guy they met by chance in a new light. Maybe if we ask he might give us the premium version for free. $100 a month is really too much. Just what kind of subscription is that? Kitty complained while both Rogue and Jean giggled at her. What are you guys talking about? Someone said abruptly turning back they saw a familiar face with eyes covered in a red visor. Scott Summers. Just about that company name. Dagon Technologies don't you recognize it? They made the app Spectre for blocking ads and all kinds of other things, Jean explained. Oh uh, no not really? 
I don't need that sort of thing. It really was true as well. Scott, despite being a teenager really didn't care for the internet and mostly enjoyed working on his red Mustang GT. Really come on you had to have heard it from Kurt at least once, Kitty exclaimed as she showed him the app on her phone. No still, no clue but I get it. This company is pretty good. Kitty just sighed in defeat while the rest of the team arrived. Interesting I still can't feel his mind even from this close the professor said as Zara pushed him forward. These words caught everyone's attention as they stopped talking about the tech company. Xavier may have been a cripple but his mind truly was powerful. So his comment came off as something quite unusual. Right professor? It really surprised me last time as well Jean added as Xavier gave her a nod. It really was a strange experience to know someone was there but you couldn't feel their mind. This had only ever happened upon being near brain dead people as there was nothing to feel. On the other hand here they had Cole who clearly wasn't brain dead adding to the strange situation. But it was always safe to check who knows he might not be here at the moment. Professor turned towards Logan who knew what to do. Sniff sniff sniff. Giara he's here alright but there's also Logan's words were suddenly halted as Xavier lifted his hands to stop him from continuing. The reason for this was because Logan didn't only smell coal but also the spies nearby watching. Xavier also knew about them as he felt their minds focused on them from the moment they arrived. It seems like young Cole may have already drawn some attention to himself. I believe meeting him now is more important than before. Logan agreed while the rest except for Jean were confused by what he meant as she had long noticed their presence as well. With an added uncertainty Xavier was about to direct his students toward the warehouse, until the doors suddenly opened revealing the young man they had been searching for. Jean and her friends smiled at his appearance, with it already being a week since they first met him. In response, they stepped forward to introduce their family, friends but were stopped by Logan. The three girls looked surprised at his intervention as he stepped in front of the group with a growl. Xavier was curious to see this reaction. He knew Logan had powerful senses and wondered what it was about Cole that triggered them. Logan, what is it? Xavier asked as the rest of the group listened. Grrr he doesn't smell right there's something wrong with him. Logan made a stance as he unconsciously let his claws out. Hey Logan, we're here to talk to him, not attack the guy. Jean's words brought him out of his state as he focused back on his group. Aura was interested in what Logan's senses were telling him and decided to ask. Logan, what's bothering you about him? He feels unnatural. Logan's statement didn't give them any answers, just more questions as all eyes went back to Cole who was walking their way. Chapter 33, Chapter 33 X-Men Part Half Edited Hearing people outside I decided it was best for me to greet them rather than having them enter. I double checked my traps and made sure everything was rigged before leaving. I still wasn't sure who it was but I had some ideas on who it could be. Let's just say that none were good. Once outside I locked eyes with a peculiar group of people. That practically guaranteed trouble with their arrival. The X-Men and quite a bit of them too. Jean was here with her two friends, Rogue and Kitty who looked excited to see me. There were also some new additions. Like the most hated X-Men member in web novel Scott Summers. Beside them was the professor who gave me a sage-like smile and a woman standing behind him with white hair who could only be a now last but definitely not least was a man I could only describe as a wild man. He looked like the kind of guy to finish a fight he wasn't even in. Then force the guys he beat up to pay the bill as he leaves the bar with a gallon of beer. Logan aka the Wolverine. It also didn't help that said man was giving me dangerous vibes as he snarled from across the parking lot, with claws exiting his closed fists in a threatening manner. Man, what did I do to make this guy so pissed off? He looks like he'll attack the moment I move. With caution, I chose to remain still and calm as I remembered something I had learned once from the Discovery Channel. When running into a wild animal a person has to remain calm and create as little movement as possible before backing away and creating distance. Logan wasn't an animal but he was pretty close so I chose to follow the same method. Except for backing away due to us already having quite a distance. I'm not sure if Logan somehow understood my meaning because it seemed like I just bothered him more as he started walking in my direction, only to be stopped by Jean who shouted at him. This seemed to snap him out of whatever was wrong with him, as he took a normal posture attracting his claws. Well, now that the tension has calmed somewhat I should go and meet them. On my way toward them, I began to feel a light pressure on my mind coming from Jean. Thankfully she learned her lesson and wasn't forcing herself into my head. 
the pressure she placed this time around was more like a knock asking for permission. I thought about it for a moment and decided to allow it as I also used a new technique parallel thought to hide my real thoughts as we communicate, something I remembered when I tried looking into more mind-related abilities. Hey Col, these are my friends I mentioned before Jean said as she sent her message to my mind. They're ones from your school? I asked acting like I had no recollection of their group. Yay they're really good people and sorry for coming so late at night they really wanted to meet you. I just gave her an odd indicating I didn't mind when in truth I minded quite a bit but what's done is done. With that last message, I felt her mind reel back as I arrived in front of the group. It was quiet for a moment as the previous tension caused by Logan still lingered in the air. Thankfully the professor chose to cut that tension as he rolled in. It is nice to meet you Col. I am Professor Charles Xavier, the headmaster of the school Jean and her friends attend. Plus 10 points meeting Charles Xavier. He said as if it was completely normal for a headmaster of a school to show up at someone's property unannounced at one in the morning. Nice to meet you as well but this still doesn't explain why you are all here late at night. Zabi seemed to have expected this response and just gave a smile and a nod agreeing with what I said. That's the topic I wanted to get to. However, instead of continuing his conversation, I felt a familiar knock on my mind asking permission except this time it wasn't Jean but the professor. I was really hesitant about letting this guy in my head. He had some tendencies to cross boundaries and mind rape others with most victims being his very own students. If I let him in my mind then only I'd be to blame for that. It'd be like knowing a gay rapist was at my door but I still chose to let him in just because he's my friend's teacher. Anything that happens after that is totally my fault with no one to blame but myself. Sorry. But I don't let people I just met into my head jeans alright though she's a good girl who respects boundaries. Sometimes. Zavi seemed a bit surprised by my response but knew a good impression was required as he pulled back his mind. I understand then is it alright if you come with us? This isn't really a good place to talk. I really wanted to reject these guys but honestly, they were basically a point farm. Then there was also Jean, Rogue, and Kitty who were looking at me with hopeful eyes. Lead the way. Xavier just gave a smile as he began to roll with everyone following behind him. Well except for one scary individual, standing at 6 feet 3 inches with bones made of adamantium. Speaking of 6 feet 3 inches shouldn't this guy be short? Listen here bub I don't like the smell of you but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, so don't try nothing Logan said well, more like threatened as his claws appeared. Wouldn't dream of it but do I really smell bad? Odd my senses are all heightened so wouldn't I notice that or is he just picking on me? You smell unnatural like something cooked up in a lab. With that response, I tried smelling myself and did notice a faint new scent coming from myself but who would have imagined just that was enough to tick this guy off, he truly did have some great senses. Plus 10 meeting James Howlett. The walk ended up not being too far from the warehouse as we eventually reached an empty park. However, that soon changed as a jet began to appear out of nowhere. Ha, huh, I wonder what Ned would say if he saw that I wasn't the only one with cloaking tech. Once inside I took a seat in front of the professor who seemed ready to continue our conversation. So what dangers are you talking about? Xavier didn't reply this time as he left it to the most exotic ex menora Having a closer look at her I couldn't deny that she was a one-of-a-kind beauty. Flawless tanned skin with natural white hair, while also being quite curvy but not fat as she gave a mommy vibe. Now I understand why web novel readers were so obsessed with her. Damn, Tkala really dropped the ball on this one. If you haven't figured it out yet then I'll tell you now. Everyone here is a mutant and we believe you are as well. Plus 10 points meeting a Roman row. Hearing this I realized that they had confused me with a mutant which I was about to deny but realized that there were some perks to this. For one if my abilities end up being exposed down the line I could just use the X-Gene as an excuse. Which would save me the trouble of having to hide the existence of my serum, yeah? The title of mutant also came with its fair share of problems but none as bad as having a fully functioning super soldier serum. Jean has already informed us that you have a powerful mind but is there anything else you've noticed? This question got everyone's attention as they all focused on me. I thought about it for a moment as I tried to see all the angles and possibilities in what I revealed to them. If I only showed my mind's capabilities then there was a chance for them to teach me more on mental techniques. However. If I also added my super soldier prowess then there was a relatively high chance of me being able to gain access to training, something I really need right now. 
The teaching environment was also good for this opportunity. With a great combat teacher like Logan and even good places to train like the Danger Room. Speaking of training I should also purchase VR technology and scan every enhanced individual I see for combat practice. A good plan for later. There were obviously cons to this as well with the X-Men being aware of my capabilities but that would change. My powers would evolve and grow with all the enhancements I'll take in the future. So whatever they learned now would eventually be old news. Meaning the best option would be to take advantage of this opportunity while I still have plenty of room to improve. I did notice some other things. Jean looked surprised by this as she didn't expect me to have more than just my mind. While Xavier took a bit more interest along with Logan who had been keeping an eye on me. Getting up I walked over to one of the rails in the jet and ripped it off surprising the people in the room. Super strength rogue whispered but was heard by everyone inside. They were surprised by this but what I did next really caught them off guard. As I used the jagged part of the rail to cut my hand only for it to heal as the skin closed. Everyone turned back to Logan who had a surprised expression. Why wouldn't he be? This seemed to be similar to him. By chance do you have claws? Aura asked thinking that I may be some lost love child of Logan. No, my power is an overall enhancement from my mind to strength, speed, and regeneration. After that, I wiped the blood from my hand on my clothes while I kept the rail with me. I did not want these guys getting even a drop of my blood so holding on to it the rest of the trip seemed like the best thing to do. Buff switch Xavier. A boost in all his capabilities, that is quite well rounded. He also seems to lack any defects whether that be in appearance or ability. Wait, could that be why? He suddenly had a realization as he remembered the men watching Col. They didn't seem to know much from what he gathered, merely tasked with observation. But it all made sense once you put the pieces together. Cole's mutation made him very similar to Captain America. He even lacked defects making him a perfect weapon. A perfect super soldier. The professor began to feel worry in his heart. This was a situation he had seen one too many times. A mutant showing a useful ability a corporation or government wanted and would do anything to get, even willing to do human experimentation to try and extract it. Xavier thought as his mind created an entire conspiracy aimed at Cole. He, being a righteous good man, saw the need to step in and make Cole aware of these dangers. Xavier had a smile as he resolved himself, causing Cole to have a chill down his spine. Buff switch MC. Xavier had a strange light in his eyes and I did not like it, not one bit. I knew coming was a bad idea but I can't back out now. Cole did you know you were being watched? Xavier suddenly asked. This question took some of the others by surprise while Jean and Logan made a sour expression. Watched Professor? Who would do that? Rogue asked while also surprised that there were other people there besides them. For many reasons. We know more than anyone why someone might want a mutant Zabby said while hinting towards some of the more nefarious groups they've come across over the years. Experimentation, she whispered, realizing just how dangerous the people nearby could have been. Despite being a whisper it was like everyone heard her words in a microphone. Logan even began growling in response as if recalling a bad dream. Being watched. Wait, aren't these guys talking about S.H.I.E.L.D.? Seems like they think they were there to experiment on me. Quite the misunderstanding and I don't like where it's going. Xavier is known to overreact and I don't wish to have my freedom taken from me. So I better fix this quickly. What do you mean professor? Exactly as it sounds it appears you've caught the eye of some individuals most likely wanting your abilities. I made a face of realization before intervening to add effect in what I'd say next. Ah, I think you misunderstand professor. You see I'm currently building up a company but some people are quite against my product. I've also noticed them and they haven't tried anything as of yet. Well except those Hydra agents. Speaking of Hydra they've been oddly quiet which is never good. Because of a product. Xavier was confused by this as it was not in his expectations. Yeah, it's an app called Spectre. It's been gaining traction lately and I guess some people aren't happy about it, especially because it helps privatize your information on the web. I said giving the most basic description I could. Thankfully the girls seemed to be aware of the app and explained in greater detail to Xavier until we reached the famous mansion. Chapter 34, Chapter 34 X-Men Part 2 Halves Edited Stepping out of the plane I noticed that Xavi seemed to be much calmer than before, no longer on edge due to my local stalkers at S.H.I.E.L.D. 
though he still seemed a bit apprehensive about the group at least now he won't do something drastic like forcing an X-Men with me at all times. That would be truly annoying to deal with. Walking away from the old man I reached an area that gave a better view of his private school for the gifted. It looked exactly as I remembered in the movies appearing like a castle, completely made out of brick with a noble design. The walls themselves seemed like they carried great history in them making this place truly unique. I even got a bit jealous realizing that this was Xavier's childhood home. Image. This is a nice place you guys got here I commented as I truly appreciated the scenery. Especially because of how peaceful it felt here. Kitty ran up to my side as she began slapping my back in excitement right isn't this place great? Come on, we have so much to show you. Ah first you should meet Kurt I think you'd get along with him. He likes computers too. She was like a bundle of energy trying to pull me along. Thankfully Jean my hero arrived as she pried Kitty off my arm. Haha <laughs> sorry about that we just don't get lots of visitors here she apologized while Kitty just stuck out her tongue. I think Kitty is right though we should take him to see Kurt Rogue mentioned hoping we'd get along. I just smiled while this was going on. They were fun to be around and they were good people like Gwen, Ned, and Peter. Hey Cole did you grow taller by chance? Rogue asked noticing the height difference between us grow larger. I just acted oblivious to it really I don't notice anything different. No I swear you were a bit shorter before she was adamant about this but I continued to play it off as she poked me with her glove covered fingers. Haha <laughs> okay stop yeah I think I grew like an inch or two. See how easy that was? Rogue said like she achieved a great victory. Our fun soon came to an end due to a certain cyclops. Sorry but he can't explore the grounds. He needs to stay with the professor. I turned towards Scott for the first time and noticed the smug smirk he had. Plus 10 points meeting Scott Summers. Ah, he really does have a punchable face but manners make Eth man so I'll hold my fist for now. Don't be lame Scott we'll be really quick Kitty said as she poked his chest but his face remained unchanged. Hey we can go later plus I bet your friend is asleep by now. Hee <laughs> hee you'd be surprised I don't even think Kurt sleeps she joked as she thought of her blue friend. With that, we waited till the professor rolled in with Logan and Dora. I get that you guys say I'm a mutant but why am I here? I asked the professor. Well, to invite you to our school Xavier said, almost expecting me to accept right away. This thought seemed to be shared with his students as they looked at me waiting to hear a yes. I'm gonna have to pass on that one I replied instantly shattering their expectations. The one who seemed most angry about this was Scott. Hey, who do you think you are? We went out of our way to go get you and this is what you have to say? You're lucky we even found you. His words went non-stop as he criticized me. Xavier rolling forward placed a hand on Scott's shoulder as he got him to back away from me. Sorry for Scott he is just passionate Xavier said making my eyebrow rise wondering if that was really passion. But would you mind giving a reason? Now I didn't need to explain myself to them but they had been hospitable thus far excluding red eyes. Well for a couple of reasons actually. You see, my school year is almost over with us graduating in around two months, so switching schools just doesn't make sense. This was true with us currently being in April and set to graduate by June 2nd. Secondly I plan on focusing on my company full time so I don't really have time for much else. Xavier looked like he was pressed into a hard position as he tried to think of a way to get me to stay but couldn't think of anything permanent. He had only thought of one method so far but it would mostly have me as a visitor rather than a student but it would have to do. Alright, I understand but you don't have to be a student to visit the school. You are a mutant and therefore one of us. Zabi said hoping my friendship with his students would eventually lead me to staying. This time I was surprised, half expecting him to force me but I guess you can't judge someone just off the comics. This was real life and so far he hadn't been too bad but I'd still keep my eye on him. If you'd like, we could give you some combat training for emergencies. You are being watched by suspicious individuals so it would be best to be prepared. Now this was the offer I was waiting for. Training and danger room here I come. Now that offer I'll take. Everyone was quiet not expecting me to agree with training after refusing to attend. Well all but one person who gave me a grin. Haha, <laughs> but let's see what you got Logan said before disappearing from my vision. Fast. He suddenly appeared in front of me throwing punches left and right. Hey, don't we need to go somewhere for this kind of thing? I complained while keeping my distance. Why'd we need to do that? Here's as good of a place as any. Now try not to die. He roared as punched my gut launching me back. 
Shit this guy is fast. Rogue who was off to the side gave Jean a worried look. Will he be okay? Jean gave a half-hearted response he should be. He heals fast right? I guess that's true Rogue replied now focusing back on the one-sided brawl. The fight had only been going on for around 10 seconds but I had already been punched twice. Without even being able to retaliate. Damn. His fists are made of metal so blocking hurts way more than normal. Dodging another punch I began to analyze the situation. The ground, our placing, and speed and strength, along with advantages and disadvantages. My mind was compiling everything it could as it tried to find a way to win but victory seemed impossible. Logan had more combat experience and he was stronger than I was, despite having the CH-24. His healing factor was also better, being able to regrow limbs and survive atomic bombs. My only advantage was my mind and also my speed. He had adamantium bones making him heavy. He still was quite agile but the bones really did slow him down. At least enough for me to dodge and anticipate. Aren't you a man? Stop dodging and fight back, Logan said after I jumped over another one of his stabs. Ignoring his comments I remembered another strength he had which was also a weakness. His senses. Instantly an image appeared in my mind of Naruto farting on Kiba but I wasn't low enough to do something like that. If I can't attack his sense of smell then I'll mess up his hearing. Logan was charging at me once more but this time I didn't dodge and charged right back. First, remove his attacks from the equation. With perfect positioning, I placed my hands in between his and pushed them sideways like a swimmer. Next aim for his ears. While my hands were parted I brought them back down with all my strength as I slammed his head on both sides. Subject disoriented equilibrium out of balance. His vitals and weaknesses are open but he's recovering fast. Cocking my right arm back I slammed my fist straight into his neck. Making him gag on his blood as he stepped back. Blood vessels ruptured and air was momentarily cut off. Logan who had been on the receiving end grew more savage as I hit his weak points and started attacking at an even faster speed. However, I didn't stop as well as I continued using Wing Chun to slap Logan's hands away while doing damage to areas where he had no bones. At some point Logan stopped fighting back as I attacked, making me worried when he suddenly caught my arms holding them in place. He grinned devilishly at me with a glint in his eye got you. Oh no. His head slamming into mine was the last thing I saw before my vision disappeared. Dot. 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 Buffs which. Huff Huff Kid's got some fight in him Logan said looking down at the unconscious Cole with a smile. Xavier came closer and looked at the boy. That he does he even put you on the receiving end for a moment there Xavier teased his old friend earning a grunt in response. Our guy just let him get some hits in. What did you think? Aura asked Logan once she joined them. He's a novice but he's smart. Xavier seemed amused by that response so you noticed that too? From the moment the fight began Xavier realized that Cole's thinking capabilities were much higher than they thought. Every choice he made in that fight was with a plan in mind, which shouldn't be possible with how fast the fight was going especially for one inexperienced. This became even more apparent once Cole began retaliating aiming only for weaknesses specific to Logan. Yeah, he aimed at parts of my body that didn't have bones most of the fight. That would mean he realized my skeleton is made of metal or at least hard enough to avoid hitting. My claws must have tipped him off when he saw them earlier, Logan added as he thought back on how Cole attacked. Aura kneeled down beside Cole as she watched his bruising slowly fade. His healing factor also seems to be weaker than yours. Not healing nearly as quickly but it's still impressive. At this point, the rest of the group also arrived beside Cole as they checked on him. And take him to see Hank so he can rest Xavier advised as the girls quickly began to move him while complaining about his weight. Chapter 35 Chapter 35 Changing Fate While Cole was with the X-Men getting his beating, Peter was out testing out a new gadget at a random abandoned warehouse. Thwip. Haha ha, it works. The tensile strength is perfect. I just need to test how long it lasts. Peter had already been working on making web shooters before Cole even mentioned it but didn't have success. After the little prep talk they had he went back to tackle the problem and ended up actually doing it. I'll call these web shooters from now on man I can't wait till Cole sees this he'll be stoked. Looking down at his watch his eyes suddenly widened as he realized the time. Ah, I'm so late, Aunt May's going to be so mad. He quickly began running home as he climbed up walls and jumped between rooftops like a parker expert. This was something he enjoyed doing recently with his new capabilities, 
but they were really being put to the test tonight as he tried his best not to be even a minute later. After a couple of twists and turns, he finally arrived home only to see Uncle Ben waiting at the door. I'm dead, he thought as he slowed down and prepared mentally. Peter, where have you been? Peter just looked down, he didn't want to explain his powers or the web shooters. I was just outside. Uncle Ben looked dissatisfied with this response as he put his arm on Aunt May's shoulder. Really outside you say, so did you bring back the eggs and milk, like you said you would this morning? Peter froze for a moment hearing that as he remembered his uncle's clear instructions. It's just that so much happened today from getting his first paycheck and even being able to talk to someone about his powers. Groceries were way off his mind on things to remember or do. I'll just get them tomorrow Uncle Ben. Ben just sighed. That's right you can do that tomorrow but it seems you still don't remember one more thing. Why didn't you at least get May? Do you know how far she needed to walk? Queen's isn't dangerous like Hell's Kitchen but it's not safe either especially a woman at night. Peter looked at May who had been quiet so far as she stayed out of the talk between the two. Of all the things he forgot Aunt May should never have been one of them. He felt guilty just looking at her imagining what could have happened. I'm sorry Uncle Ben but look here pulling out his phone he moved his screen to his bank and showed Ben his money. Look Ben I just got paid, maybe we can buy another car so Aunt May won't ever have to walk again Peter saw this as his way out to better his aunt's lifestyle but it came off wrong to Uncle Ben. Peter, that's good and I'm proud of you for getting that much money. In fact, it's amazing but that's not the message I'm trying to send to you. It's the principal Peter something's been up with you and you refuse to talk to us. Just look at May she's worried sick about you. Peter by this point didn't know what to say. He knew he was keeping a distance right now but that was only because he was still figuring his powers out. He didn't mean to make May sad. In that situation he just let his emotions take over him as he no longer wanted to be there. I'm sorry aunt and uncle I'll go get the groceries right now he said running out the door as uncle Ben called for him to come back. He needed air to clear his head and think of a way to really apologize. So he went to a rooftop to relax. As he sat up there he thought back to everything that had happened so far and realized that the best thing to do was confess. About Oscorp, his father's work, and everything in between so they could understand why he had been this way. Once he did that then maybe he could also share this with Ned and Gwen. Lying and pretending had already been hard enough. Now he was seeing the result and how it affected the people close to him. With his mind clear he got up to head back home and really apologize. Bang. What was that? It sounded like a gunshot Peter didn't have a good feeling as he ran towards the noise. It wasn't until he saw a familiar frame on the floor clutching his stomach. He knew that person, no he didn't just know that person he loved that person like a father it was. Uncle Ben. Peter arrived by his side and tried putting pressure on the wound but there was just so much blood he was beginning to panic. Looking around he tried finding someone to help but everyone just watched as they kept their distance. Someone. Anyone help me but his cries fell on deaf ears as they just gave him anxious looks. Some people at least called for the police and ambulance but Peter knew they wouldn't make it. Feeling a hand on his face he looked down at Ben. It's okay Peter please take care of May. Ben was beginning to feel cold and that's when Peter remembered Cole's gift. Quickly pulling out his backpack he pulled out a large syringe. The Stumpack. Remember Peter with great power. Come great responsibility I know Ben just tell me later and save your energy with delicate and swift movements he injected the super medicine into Ben's arm who at this point had his eyes closed. Please work, please. As if answering his prayers the gun wound suddenly began to seal making it seem like he was never shot. Gasp. Ben suddenly jumped up clutching his chest as air returned to his lungs. Stunning everyone nearby as the apparent dead man returned to the living completely healed. Ben had a blank look trying to figure out how he was still alive as he turned to Peter, who at this point could no longer contain his emotions and hugged his uncle. Peter how? Releasing his uncle he just smiled with tears still in his eyes. Buffs which? Around this time Cole was beginning to wake up when he suddenly noticed a familiar notification screen from his system. Uncle Ben was saved his destiny forever changed as his life was taken back from the hands of Lady Death plus 1000 points. Peter was able to save his uncle altering his destiny plus 1000 points. Aunt May's destiny forever changed as she will no longer suffer alone plus 1000. You have earned Lady Death's curiosity plus 1000 points. Available points 5660. For a moment I remained frozen in shock as I processed everything. 
I was just in a fight with Logan that ended with me blacking out but when I opened my eyes I was suddenly bombarded with messages. With some even being about Lady Death. Sitting up from my bed I rubbed my nose and focused my mind as I shut off my emotions. I usually didn't do this because of how inhuman it felt but it was times like this where logic was required. Let's look at this from the beginning. First and foremost my plan succeeded and Peter was able to save Ben. Something I clearly would have not been able to do, making it a good decision to leave the Stimpak in Peter's hands. Now because of this, I didn't just change Uncle Ben's fate but the fate of his family, earning me 3k points just from that. This would have usually been all well and good as points are always welcomed. Except now they have come along with a multiversal being clearly out of my league. Lady Death. A character who is practically impossible for me to predict even with NZT. She's a character that has been in many stories written by different people. Obviously leading to variations with some being easier to get along with while others have her listed as a villain. If I'm lucky then she might be kind and caring like death from DC but if it's the latter. Ah, it's best if I don't think that way. My only saving grace in all of this is that she hasn't immediately killed me thanks to her being curious. So that's something I guess. Sigh. This really was a lot to take in but at least Ben is alive. I thought with a smile as I brought back my emotions. Knock knock knock. Hearing a knock I faced the door and watched it slowly open as a giant blue creature entered holding a clipboard. Seems like you're up and awake already. Ah, but where are my manners? I haven't introduced myself. I am Dr. Hank McCoy, the science teacher at the school as well as the nurse. He said as he gave me his hand to shake. Hank, so this is the beast he was one of my favorite characters in the past. Especially the movie version he always seemed like a nice guy. Not wanting to look rude I met his gesture and shook his hand. Thanks for the treatment doc but by chance do you know how long I've been here? Think nothing of it besides I hardly had to do a thing you were healed by the time you arrived. As for the time wheel, it's already 11. Plus 10 points meeting drive Henry Hank P. McCoy. I scrunched my face hearing the time. It looked like I'd be missing another day of school which meant I was probably going to get expelled. The amount of school I had missed was astronomical but this was also a good outcome. With so many points in the chamber I have no reason to go back in fact now am I have so much to do. The school would just take precious time from me so I'll just apply for early graduation. Jumping out of bed I began making my way out, only to be greeted by Logan who was waiting outside. Ha, huh, I'll admit I didn't expect to see you waiting for me not in the slightest I thought I'd find one of the girls here or even the professor. Ha, huh, don't get used to it bub I'm just here to let you know that if you want some more sparring just ask. With that said Logan just began walking away before I could respond but hey looks like I have a training instructor. Now that my business was mostly done with the X-Men I quickly made my way home. Chapter 36 Chapter 36 Making it rain on the system the girls tried to get me to stay so I could meet some more of their friends when they heard I was leaving but I politely declined. I had too many things to do and I was sure my friends were trying to contact me but my phone was broken. I could only imagine how many times Peter tried to contact me for indirectly helping Ben. With that in mind, I went straight to the warehouse to access my laptop. Checking my messages it ended up being exactly as I thought with a grip ton of messages from Peter. Peter, call we need to talk. Something happened last night. I'll explain it all later at school. Peter, man when are you gonna read my messages they're important. Peter, Ben really needs to see you. Peter, bro did you really ditch again? This went on for quite a while as the messages kept going as I scrolled. In response, I sent him back a reply letting him know that I was at the warehouse. Which instantly got me a response from him saying he would be coming over with Ben once school was over. Now with those affairs in order it's time that I really started planning. The only thing that really held me back in the past was a lack of points and finances but now those things aren't really a problem. This is also why I only focused on the military aspect of things. I needed money and they were an easy way to get it. However, with everything I have now, I should also extend my reach to the police. The military had obvious benefits. Increasing my position in the world while also granting me plenty of funds. The police however are the ones I consider to be the most important. Gwen's father is in the force and in most worlds he suffers the same fate as Uncle Ben dying for Peter's character growth. Things have changed with Peter not even knowing Gwen's dad but I'm not one to leave things to chance. Then there's the Battle of New York. The military practically had no presence in that fight. It was mostly just the police who fought the Chitauri till the Avengers arrived. 
The movie made the whole scene appear amazing and heroic but this is the real world. Such an event would be worse than the September 11th attacks. The loss of life and infrastructure would be astronomical. This made me think about entering the medical field but that would be quite challenging. For now, it would be best to gain influence and then enter that field once there is less restriction. Checking my bank account I noted that I had plenty of funds to spare. Peter and Ned Zapp already had working servers so the money should start rolling in once it's launched. All these funds would give me a greater range of maneuverability for the machines required in my military and police ventures. Even extra for some other items leaving me with the question. What else, do I need right now? AI was the first thing that came to mind but I had a feeling that it would be a long and time consuming venture. What I really needed was something that could help me cover my main weakness. Martial arts and combat experience. I already had the body of a super soldier and I knew it could be pushed further with training. My body's control was also at its peak thanks to NZT giving me 100% control. However despite all these positives I still lost against Logan. Yeah, he had a better healing factor and had stronger bones but that's where his advantages ended at least physically. His strength outclassed mine but not by much. I knew for a fact that I could match him with once I started doing some weight training. Then I completely beat him when it came to my mental control and speed but even those things couldn't beat true experience. With my flaw recognized I made a training plan in my mind using multiple things I learned from my last life to push my body to its peak. Then finally came martial arts and experience. Martial arts was the easy part because if I really wanted to I could walk into every dojo in town and memorize everything. Yet this wouldn't give me the experience needed to fight against opponents who matched or even outclassed me. Troubled by this I remembered what I was thinking about earlier in the day. Virtual reality. There I could conjure my own opponents for training, giving me plenty of experience without having to expose what I know to anyone. Hey system show me military, police, and anything I'll need for VR technologies. Very well. System shop. Fallout. Energy weapons plus 50. Ballistic weave plus 50. Power armor plus 80. Virtual reality plus 100. Halo. Weaponry plus 30. Marine armor plus 30. ODST armor plus 50. Spartan armors plus 200. Computers plus 100. Chappie. Scout police robot plus 100. Moose scout plus 100. Computers plus 100. Resident Evil. Computers plus 100. Sow. Nerve gear plus 200. World seed plus 500. Computers plus 100. Ready Player One. Oasis plus 500. VR Gear plus 200. Computers plus 200. Available points 6000. From this point, the list just went on as it continued mentioning worlds like Call of Duty and Pacific Rim but I remained on the first couple. They basically had everything I required at the moment. The Ballistic Weave is a prime example of this as it would improve the overall armor and protection of the military and police uniforms. Granting them a better fighting chance against the Chitauri along with protecting Wen's dad. The scout robots in Chappie were also a good choice. They had no fear and weren't people meaning when they went down there was no loss of life. Another great thing about them was how they were rechargeable. With those two choices made, I began scanning through the VR technologies. Each one was different based on their purpose and some were quite simple. Any one of them could have fulfilled my purpose but at the end of the day I knew exactly which one would give me the most for what I wanted. So. It not only gave VR tech but I remembered the anime even showing pretty high level A.I.'s being made with it. Meaning I didn't need to spend as much time investing in AI as I originally thought. So I quickly checked the price for the AI I knew I wanted. Cortana plus 500. With my decisions made, I walked over to a chair and placed a piece of cloth in my mouth. System purchase ballistic weave, police scout, Cortana, nerve gear, world seed, and computers from both Halo and Sow. I said adding on the computers from Halo so I could merge the knowledge from both worlds. Would you like to confirm your purchase? Yes, no. I was about to click yes but my eyes drifted towards the Halo section one more time. I had the points so might as well go all in. System add in ODST, Spartan Armors, and confirm the purchase. Purchase confirmed remaining total 4000 points. At that moment I felt like my mind became overloaded. An all too familiar feeling that I've already experienced multiple times. 
my mind hurt just like any other time as I was forced fed knowledge except this time I didn't fall unconscious and I knew why. Chromosome 24. It seemed this miracle of genetics wasn't just good at curing me of NZT withdrawal but it even healed me enough to handle the strain caused by the system. This went on for quite some time as my mind became accustomed to the pressure until suddenly it went away just as quickly as it came. Checking the time I saw that 3 hours had passed which was surprising but it made sense when I thought back to how much information I just gained. Lifting my hands I placed them on my temples as I processed everything I learned. Cue all right between the police and the military my first focus should be the police. I already have a connection with them through Gwen's father. They even use Spectre in their departments showing the trust they have in it so far. When I visited her family he also showed an interest in my company via the apps I planned on releasing but was disappointed when it was just games. This is good as it shows his interest. Now I just need to show him a good product and my company will immediately gain some more credibility. I could build from there once the military takes notice of the police having better equipment. With that plan in mind, I made a list of all the materials and machines I'd need, along with a message to Marcel to begin searching for a larger building. The space in here had started getting cramped with the servers taking up a lot of it. With the addition of more equipment then things would really begin to get tight. So it was best to just buy a larger warehouse for my use while keeping this one to house the computers. Going on my computer I began to buy everything I needed and placed it on the fastest delivery. Dot. 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 Shield. Phil Coulson stood with a troubled expression as he faced Nick Fury with the latest intel on Caldigan. A teen from Queens. He still remembers when they first discovered his app as it left most of their tech department stumped. Even now some of their computers are still playing scenes from the Looney Tunes. All of this was obviously unexpected but he never imagined things would keep escalating for this kid and now it seemed his level would be raised once more. Nick Fury faced his most trusted agent who held a familiar folder he had seen quite frequently. Sir this is the latest intel on Caldigan and I think you're going to want to read this. Phil commented as he handed Fury the folder as he opened it immediately. Phil watched as Nick Fury's brows slowly wrinkled before he abruptly closed the folder. So the X-Men came for him? Yes sir, the professor was there personally as well according to our agent's descriptions of who they saw present. This practically confirmed Cole's identity as a mutant in Fury's mind but what really puzzled him was the nature of Cole's abilities. For Xavier to head there in person it must at least be something worth his attention. Where are men able to find anything within the warehouse? Nick asked wanting to know more about the situation from Phil rather than the report. We had problems on the tent sir. Problems? Nick didn't like the sound of that, especially not in their line of work. The place is well. Rigged with traps. There are traps placed practically everywhere. With most being explosives. We were able to disarm some of them at the entrance but the difficulty kept increasing the further in you go. At some point, the lives of the men were at risk so we had to pull back and rearm the traps to hide our arrival. So many traps? Now he knew Cole was trying to hide something. That was not normal teenage behavior and instead it was closer to paranoia. How about the spyware we installed into the computers they purchased? Phil just gave a tired look as Fury had a bad feeling there wasn't going to be good news on this end either. We weren't sure either until our men checked the dumpsters and found them all in a plastic bag disarmed. Mother. Chapter 37, Chapter 37 The Ultimate Spider-Man. Alone in the warehouse, I continued keeping myself busy as I launched Peter and Ned's games. I expected great things from them and knew they'd be hits in this world just like my world. With the games launched and available on the App Store I sent each of my friends a message letting them know about it before I went to a particular section of the warehouse. Where I opened the special compartment checking on the CH-24. Thankfully it was still there meaning my security measures were successful this time. Looking down at the clear vials I thought about the risks of sharing this with my friends. We were all young but they didn't have the advantages I had in already being aware of the numerous dangers hidden throughout the world. They also didn't have a cover story for the CH-24. Especially Ned I was worried it would make him skinny overnight bringing attention to himself. With a sigh, I locked up the vials knowing I couldn't give them this yet. At least not until a couple more events pass that will initiate the change of the world. I thought while imagining Iron Man, Fantastic Four, and the Hulk who would make a mess of Harlem. NZT48 was an option but I refrained from sharing the item. For now, it was my main trump card and was something I planned on keeping a secret for a long while. 
things were different however when it came to Peter who was destined to be a major part of the world's change. Reaching in I pulled out another vial like the rest except it had a blue tint to the liquid. I didn't give it a name but its effects were elusive even to me. Technically it should give Peter the 24th chromosome along with every spider's power, which could quite possibly be anything with how many variants there are in the comics but at the end of the day Peter would be with a doubt. The Ultimate Spider-Man. Powering Peter up also grants me numerous benefits in the form of points, while also giving me a powerful bodyguard for free. Well speaking of Peter looks like he's here I said to myself as I heard a car arrive. He brought two people with him. Getting up I quickly closed the compartment and put the spider vial in my pocket as I made my way outside. Where I saw a grey jeep parked with Peter waiting outside as Ben and May stepped out of the vehicle. Hey, Peter. I shouted from the entrance of the building as he quickly turned toward me and hi Aunt May and Uncle Ben. I expected to get a greeting in return but was almost caught off guard. When Peter burst into my direction and suddenly hugged me forcing me to take a step back. Glancing down, I returned Peter's hug which was a little tight. Actually a bit too tight it was starting to hurt. Cough up Peter you're choking me here I complained as I slapped his back a couple of times as I tried to remove him. However he just stayed there. Looking behind Peter the first saw May and Ben heading our way. Who looked quite confused about the situation. Not wanting to hang around outside where S.H.I.E.L.D. could watch, I eventually got Peter to let go as I brought them all inside the office area, where Marcel and Lucy usually work but weren't present as they were out searching for a larger property. With us seated, I turned to Peter who looked like he couldn't hold in what he had to say any longer. Col thank you so much. You don't know it but last night Uncle Ben got shot and almost died. He's only here because of the Stimpak. Peter said filled with gratitude as he handed me the now empty syringe. To some, it may have seemed like Peter was overdoing it with his thanks but I knew that wasn't the case. From watching the movies, cartoons, and comics I already had a grasp of how much Peter loved his uncle. Ben who was watching from the side looked thoughtful as he thought back to the night he got shot. He had recognized that he'd overdone it and had just let his emotions out on Peter. This realization hurt him as he chased after his nephew who was the only thing he had left of his brother so he could apologize and celebrate Peter's first paycheck instead. Things didn't turn out so well as he couldn't find him no matter where he looked until a mugger suddenly pointed a gun at him. Ben hated these types and considered them the lowest of society and thought he could disarm their man using his experience. That thought would soon prove fatal as he wasn't as sharp as he once was in the military. Failing to disarm their man and getting shot in the process. At that moment he didn't want to die not for himself but for May and Peter. He had so much to teach him and he needed to make amends. As if answering his prayers Peter arrived long enough for him to give a last lesson in life. With his words said he was at peace and felt himself grow cold ready to embrace death. Until Peter suddenly injected him with something that filled him with so much vitality that he jumped up from the ground with a closed wound and a bullet on the floor. Ben was shocked but knew the risks of such an item. Looking around he noticed people starting to arrive and pull Peter as they ran home away from the crowd. Once the coast was clear he tried to convince Peter to tell him what about the injection but Peter refused to answer any of his questions. Stating it wasn't his secret to share and that he'd everything would be explained the next day. Ben spent the rest of the night wondering about it but now he felt as if his questions were all answered as he watched Peter thank Col. Col was it you who made that super medicine? Ben asked but he didn't truly believe a high schooler could make such an item but so far it all pointed to Col. The way his son acted and even that time Cole mentioned wanting to make things other than apps. We're all indicators of it even if he didn't want to believe it. Looking at the old man I could tell he was shocked and had questions. Peter on the other hand looked nervous, most likely feeling guilty about exposing me. Well yay I, I was suddenly caught off by Aunt May who didn't seem to know about Ben getting shot. Wait, what are you three talking about? Ben shot and super medicine what's going on? May didn't like some of what she was hearing and demanded an answer as both Ben and Peter looked guilty. From this point on Peter began explaining what happened the night he left as May went through multiple stages of anger and relief. The story ended with the two men having red ears from being pulled but both had smiles knowing they got let off easy. Cough I'm back to what I was saying, yay that medicine was made by me and it's called a stimpack. My confirmation really shocked Ben while May was also surprised but not as much as her husband who experienced its effects. Is that what you meant when you said you planned on selling other items? Ben asked as he looked at the empty syringe. Yeah, this is one of them but not till I get a couple of other things ready. 
This. It's going to change the world. I held back a smile at hearing him say that, after all, this was just one of many things I'd release. The rest of our time after that was spent casually with me even making them some coffee before they were ready to leave. On the way out Uncle Ben even asked if he could keep the syringe so he could frame it, which I didn't mind in the least as I gave it to him after sanitizing everything within. With the syringe in hand, they left for their car except for Peter who I stopped on the way out. You need something cool? He asked, thinking back to the stump pack worried I'd scold him for exposing it. I honestly didn't minutes since it served its purpose. Peter, tell me honestly what do you want to do with your powers? The circumstances surrounding Peter were drastically different compared to his counterparts, so it wouldn't be surprising if he decided to just remain a regular person. This question caught him off guard as he took a moment to gather his thoughts. I didn't have anything planned, I just wanted to keep having fun with you guys but last night I almost lost Ben saying this he looked down reminiscing about the scene of his uncle bleeding out with no one to help. You know before Ben was about to die he told me something that made me rethink all this. He said that line he always says that with great power comes great responsibility. Now I don't think I can just pretend and hide my powers anymore, not when I can save people. As Peter spoke a slight change appeared in his eyes as he had gained a new determination. So you want to be a hero? Peter turned a light shade of red from embarrassment. Eh no nothing like that. More like your friendly neighborhood spider guy uck it sounds dumb saying it Peter complained cringing at his own words. Ha ha you don't gotta be so shy about it. If you're so serious about this then you're going to need some help. Huh? I'll help you out, you see after seeing your powers I made something to enhance them but it's up to you if you want it. What? A way to enhance my powers? But how? He shouted with a flabbergasted expression. Pulling out the serum I ignored his question and raised it to eye level, while he focused on the content within. Peter looked like he was reacting to it as he reached out his hands like a zombie. Hold up raising my hands, I held him back as he came back to his senses. I don't know how this will affect you, at least not completely. This serum won't just enhance everything but will make you whole, to the point where you'll be closer to a new species. Peter jumped back at that as he held his hand like the mutants on TV. Similar. Peter didn't say much but reached out his hand as he grabbed onto the vial. I'll take it Peter said about ready to just inject himself here and now but I stopped him. Wait till you're home. It's best if you do it somewhere comfortable. Listening to my advice he took out his backpack and placed the vial inside. At this point, we started hearing a honk outside coming from Peter's family. I gotta go but before that here take this I'll pick them up tomorrow. He said as he tossed me small devices before running out of the building. Looking at my hands I saw the infamous web shooters and couldn't help but laugh at what he would think. Once he takes the serum and gets organic webs. Dot. 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 Buff change. Sitting alone in his room Peter sat nervously on his bed as he faced the serum in front of him. From the moment he saw it he felt as if it was calling. This excited and terrified him as he imagined the consequences. Would this turn him into a huge spider, or make him have eight A's? He wasn't sure but he trusted Colin was willing to take the risk. Placing the serum in a syringe he cleaned his arm and prepped the needle. Please don't make me an eight-legged freak with the needle against his skin he slowly pushed it in and began releasing its contents into his bloodstream. With the vial now empty he waited silently for it to take effect but didn't get the response he expected. I guess it actually wasn't that bar arg. Falling forward he felt as if his insides were being melted and then remade. It was a horrible experience with a black sludge even exiting his body in the process. Multiple times he lost consciousness only to be awoken again because of the pain. After what felt like hours Peter finally stood up and walked to his restroom but he soon encountered problems. He tried to grab onto the door handle but it became scrap metal as he held it. In panic. He jumped back ripping the door off its hinges in the process. Ah oh man it's the spider bite all over again. He lamented at the thought of having to get used to his strength again. Pushing the door off him he felt something rip out of his nails as talons grew ripping the door. Ugh, definitely knew. Getting back up he ran to his restroom and faced himself in the mirror, luckily he still looked human but his changes were obvious. A V shaped body like a Dorito, muscles that looked strong enough to take on a god. His teeth had fangs like a vampire and spikes even appeared from his wrists shocking him further. WTH. Language Peter. Aunt May shouted from outside his room reminding him he wasn't alone in this house. Buff change. 
you have altered Peter Parker's powers immensely and created a new species plus 1000 points. Oh yay, it's all coming together. Chapter 38, Chapter 38 The Grind The next couple of days were a blur as almost all of my time was spent completing tasks. The very first thing I did was apply for early graduation much to my teacher's displeasure. They complained saying I only needed to wait a month for the exams but I still insisted. Even a month was plenty of time for me to get things done, especially when I no longer wished to be weak, so I made it my mission to improve in every facet of my life. I visited dojos and learned karate, kung fu, krav maga, boxing, jiu-jitsu, mu ai tai and many more. If I wasn't watching them then I was practicing and mixing them choosing the moves I felt were the most useful, as I merged everything together seamlessly. Throughout this process, I refused to let my body fall behind and worked myself to the bone. Constantly pushing my limits as I did weight and flexibility training. In doing so I made an astonishing discovery. CH24's effect on my body enhanced my training with quick recovery. I could break down my muscles as much as I wanted and my healing factor would repair the damage making them stronger. It was such a cheat that my strength made massive improvements. My body no longer struggled to lift a thousand pounds but was now able to lift four thousand pounds with some effort. Every day was filled with training which quickly became apparent as my body changed due to the rigorous training. However, this soon proved to be a problem. I wasn't skinny anymore and was slowly looking more and more like a true super soldier. Something that would definitely catch Shield's attention with it not being normal to change that fast. Due to this, I had no choice but to buy overly large and baggy clothes looking like a guy version of Billie Eilish. My machines also began to arrive around this time giving me something else to work on. I wanted to start with sound AI technologies but I knew they would take time. So I stuck with the plan and worked on the police projects. The easiest to accomplish was the ballistic weave gaining a working prototype within a day. The special material was so impressive that I modified all my clothing giving me added protection for my day-to-day -day life. The chappies on the other hand which is what I took to calling them fed as a greater challenge. I needed to actually mold the metals into shape and make each piece personally due to not having machines made specifically for these robots. This would change in the future but for now, it was a problem I had to deal with. I complained while I worked on some circuitry before noticing something going on the TV. Good morning New York today we have some surprising news. Recently there have been a spike in arrests due to an unknown masked vigilante swinging through the city. Not much is known as of yet but people have already taken to calling him the Spider-Man. If you have any information or pictures on this masked man please call us at 1-800. While the TV was still going on I quickly snapped a photo before sending it to Peter, who surprisingly didn't reply as my message went straight to voicemail. Huh oh, that's weird I wonder what he is busy with? Dot. 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 Peter looked down at his phone as he swiped the call, putting his phone away. He felt bad but he was really onto something here at Oscorp. System ready for gene insertion. With the system ready Peter walked over to Dr. Connors while holding a hologram in his hand. Check, see what I'm trying to do? Preempt the proteins? Yeah for the immune response. Connors and Peter were fluid as they worked together arranging and rearranging as they changed and adjusted the genes. Pending pending failed. Subject deceased. Pending failed subject deceased. At this point, Connors grew frustrated and held his head as he walked away expecting more failure but Peter remained steadfast. Completely focused on the hologram hoping for success. Peptide algorithm successful. The sound of success caught Connors attention as he walked back to the hologram. Vitals normal. Limb regeneration successful. Extraordinary. Peter my boy thank you. We did it. In a moment of joy, the two shared a hug before looking back at the feed. They both recognized what this meant and it was only the beginning. After this, we can continue animal trials until we eventually perfect it for people. Then no one will ever have to live crippled again. Connor's passion was palpable with how enthusiastic he was about the whole thing. Peter as well but he noticed a call from Ben and knew his time was up. He gave his goodbyes to the professor before running out of the lab. He had messed up once not being there for his family, almost getting his uncle killed. He won't make that mistake twice. Left alone in his lab, Connors walked over and held the serum in his hands as he looked upon it with joy knowing he was almost there. His mood however soon took a downturn as a man wearing a business suit entered his lab. So it succeeded my congratulations Connors I want this at my desk by the end of the week. 
Norman I can't, it's not ready. We still have to do more animal trials to find the side effects and Connor's words soon cut off as Norman held his hand out. Image. Now Connor's you will do as told. The board and General Ross have been pressuring me for something like this and yours is the closest to success. If it's not at my desk by Friday then I'll consider this your termination from the company ending your dream of ever having that arm back. Connors nearly collapsed onto his chair hearing these words. Not only was that serum his lifelong dream but also the only way he'd ever have an arm again. Don't believe me. Well you do know I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. So I can complete that serum with or without you. Backed into a corner Connors grits his teeth and nods his head accepting Osborne's orders. Also that kid you were working with, that's Peter, right? He used to help Harry in school for a while. Let him know I got a job offer. I want him to tutor Harry again. He's been doing poorly in school and I don't think he's going to fare any better during his final exams. Connors grew worried for a moment but felt relief knowing that's all he wanted from Peter and accepted that task as well. Don't make that face Connors, I'm not a monster. Besides I have more important matters to attend to, speaking of which Octavius should be working on his fusion reactor. With those words, Norman Osborne began walking out of the room ready to check on his next scientist. Leaving behind a distraught Connors who sat still looking at the serum with helpless eyes. Dot. 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 Buff switch. Bam bam bam. Pew ooh, somehow this is actually fun to do I said to myself as I hammered a heated piece of metal. Placing it down I connected it with the rest of its parts making a full body chappy. The circuitry was already in place along with the ears that are actually antennas. All in all, it was basically a complete project but I still needed to do the finishing touches like painting and working on the programming. Then there was also the server I needed to make specifically for these robots. However, this was all light work for me at this point, at most, it'd take me the rest of the day and maybe an all-nighter before completion. Rummaging in my bag I pulled out the new phone I got to replace the one I destroyed. Scrolling through a couple of screens before I reached Gwen's contact information. With some quick typing, I sent her a message. Call, hey Gwen I know this is a little random but do you think you can set up a meeting for me with your dad? I made some stuff that I think the police will be interested in. I was about to put away my phone but unlike Peter, it seemed she was available quickly sending me back a message. Gwen, sure I'll ask him right now. Huh, so her dad's home must be rare considering he's a police captain. Gwen, talked to my dad and he said he didn't have a lot of time tomorrow but if you show up around 7am he might be able to squeeze you in a couple of minutes. 7 I guess I'm not sleeping tonight but at least I can finish Chappie by that time. With a deadline in mind, I sent her a thank you message before tossing the phone back into my bag. Now back to the grind I go hopping onto my computer, I began typing away as I started the finishing touches. Chapter 39. Chapter 39 Demonstration. George Stacy. Sitting at my desk in the precinct I couldn't help but think back to my daughter. I was able to make some time to get home and eat dinner with my family the day before. A rare occurrence with my job but one I took great joy in. Quality time with my family was something I always loved and appreciated. The only problem was my children's attachment to their devices. I tried setting up a rule of no phones at the table but sadly it never caught on with my sons. Thankfully this wasn't the case with my daughter Gwen who knew that dinner was family time and never had her phone out. At least this is how it usually was. Surprisingly she took out her phone during yesterday's dinner and started texting right there in front of me. I was going to ask her to bring it down but it was something she didn't usually do and refrained from doing so. Knowing her it must have been important. So I went back to eating my meal until Gwen suddenly asked me if I had time to meet her friend Col. A strange request. Immediately my mind thought back to the night when he overdid things, dressed in a suit with gifts like cake and roses. He didn't need to say his intentions to make it clear but so far I hadn't heard anything from Gwen so there must not be progress for him. Unless she's hiding something from me. Pulling myself from such thoughts I let her continue as she said he apparently had something to show me. The app spectre came to mind so I quickly agreed letting her know I had some time in the morning. Now here I was sitting on my desk and let's just say the boy was running out of time. I needed to get a lead on this Spider-Man case. The vigilante meant well but he was giving all of us cops a bad rap. If he really wanted to make a difference he should have gone through the proper channels and joined the force. Sigh. Guess the kid didn't make it standing up I prepared to leave until I began to hear a commotion coming from the station's entrance. 
Oh man please don't be another crackhead rushing over the sound became clearer as I heard some of my co-workers arguing with a person who seemed pretty young. I've told you guys already I'm here for Officer Stacy. We get that but you can't bring that in here. Obviously that's why I've told you guys like three times to go get him for me. Hearing my name mentioned I squeezed through some officers to get a better look. Until I eventually saw that it was Col except he looked different. His features looked smoother at a glance and he had grown taller. I had to do a double take before confirming it was Col. Officer Sullivan and Officer Wazowski he's with me no need to kick him out. I called out as the two let go of the boy while he muttered something about monsters. Sorry sir, it's just that this kid looks suspicious. He's wearing overly baggy clothes and even tried to bring in a crate with that dolly. Don't worry I won't fault you on it, the kid does look suspicious. I told my officers before turning to call you can bring that crate around the back I'll meet you there. Buffs which. Following Captain Stacy's words I walked back outside with my dolly as I pulled a large crate along. So far this thing had been a pain to transport with my Dodge Charger not having the space so I ended up renting a you all again. Much to my displeasure but that'll change soon since I plan on buying a car for the company to transport items. I would have just chucked the scout bot into the back seat but I wanted to hide its existence from S.H.I.E.L.D. for at least a couple of days. Long enough for me to get a secure deal with the police before those guys try blackmailing me in some way. Once I was at the back I saw Captain Stacy there waiting. Hey, Captain Stacy thanks for making some time for me I said in a respectful tone while also addressing him by his position since he's technically working right now. No problem but I can't spare you too much time. I'm sure you've heard about that spider guy swinging around. Thanks to him I've had less time at home he complained letting his emotions slip a bit as he really did seem tired. Well, you're going to be glad you stayed just wait a moment do you have an area to test weapons? Captain Stacy just gave me an odd look but humored me as we arrived at the station's gun range. Perfect. Now Captain Stacy, what do you think about the current clothing police use? Is it effective or do you wish it did more? I said like a guy trying to win over the sharks in the shark tank. Their descent but better would obviously be preferred. We've lost some good men over the years. I gave him an understanding nod before taking out a regular white button-up shirt that some cops use, before heading to one of the targets as I placed the item down. Back with Stacy I looked at him and gestured toward the new target. Well Captain, why not try a couple of shots? Based on his look I knew he didn't have much expectation of this likely underestimating my creation but that would soon change. Stepping forward Stacy pulled out a 22 glancing at me one more time as he proceeded to fill the shirt with lead. Except it didn't leave any rips or tears. Surprising him as he lowered his gun and put it to safety. What? That shirt is completely fine but how? That captain is my new product, I present to you the Burlistic Weave, a mod I invented that can be added to most clothing increasing its damage resistance without changing an item's appearance. George was too surprised to talk but felt that a 22 had to be the shirt's limit as he walked over and pulled out a 12-gauge shotgun. 22 is one thing let's see how the shirt handles buckshot raising the gun to eye level he honed in and pressed the trigger. Bam bam bam. Done shooting we both walked over and found the shirt mostly the same with only a light deer but no penetration. Meaning that if this was a real person they would survive, yeah? They'd have a couple of broken bones but at least they'd live. Wow, kid I've got to hand it to you. This really is something else. I can really see this saving my medans lives in the field. You've seen nothing yet Captain Stacy I still haven't shown you what's in the crate. Realization hit him as he looked behind me at the crate that had been quiet so far. Taking out my phone I pressed a button causing a sound to go off in the crate as the lid opened up revealing the police scout. Behold the future of law enforcement. On cue, the scout jumped out of the crate before walking beside me. Designation Scout 01 Mission to Protect and Serve. Captain Stacy was quite literally frozen in shock. A couple of years from now heroes and high-tech items will be quite common sights but for now, this is relatively new, so Stacy's reaction is to be expected. Coming out of his shock he walked up to the scout and went around it a couple of times. Before looking at me and the robot a couple of times. It's in front of me but I still can't believe it. Seeing his reaction I just gave a smirk and couldn't wait to see more reactions like this. Captain mind if Scout 01 uses your firearm for a demonstration? He gave me a serious look before looking back at the robot. 
Usually, he would have quickly denied handing his gun to anyone who wasn't an officer but even he was intrigued and ended up giving in. He handed his 22 to the scout who got into position with haste. Fire. Bam 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 bam. The scout quickly unloaded the firearm, unlike Officer Stacy who took time to aim and focus. Why? Because he had no need to do such things. The scout quite literally had aimbot adding to the fact that it wasn't human, no hesitation. Once the round was empty Scout 01 pulled back the gun and spun it like Robocop before returning it back to Stacy, which was quite cool to see confirming it was a good idea to add that feature in after all. Stacy also seemed impressed but he was more focused on the target as the body page came back to us to check. Lo and behold not a single miss every bullet hit the same part, the head. Incredible, it's like something straight out of a movie. Quite the funny comment considering it literally is from a movie. But I can't approve this. His words brought an awkward silence to the room but it didn't come as a surprise. I had already expected this outcome after all. I'm just a captain so approving something like shirts is okay but this is a whole different level. You'll need to show this to the police commissioner before anything is to happen. His reply was exactly what I had expected. He didn't have the clearance for such a thing but his superiors did. Which is why I still brought it to him in the first place. He's my only contact with the police right now so maybe he can get me a meeting. Can you help make that meeting happen? Usually he would be a hard person to meet even for me but considering what you're offering here it might work out. Without waiting for my response Stacy walked away as he took out his phone and began calling someone. Not wanting to get in his way I found a place to sit and began doing a diagnostic check to pass the time as I looked over some of the security I added to the scouts program. I wasn't dumb nor naive enough to believe that not one of them would get kidnapped so I added as many countermeasures as possible. For one the server that controls the scouts and the scouts themselves all have back doors for me to regain control should something happen. They're also equipped with trackers near their main processors. Meaning if someone tries to remove it they'll most likely fail and end up damaging the scout instead. Next, I added a mode called Final Stand, in the event of the scout being attacked with the purpose of being taken. The machine will literally explode if it sees no way of escape. A nice little mechanic I had learned from the Fallout Universe robots. With things checked out, I focused back on Captain Stacy who was still pacing around the room as he talked with someone. Yes yes thank you for your time hanging up the call he came over with a smile meaning it had to be good news. Well, kid you got a meeting. I tried explaining what you showed me to him but in the end, I don't really think he believed me. Still, he was interested to check it out. So when do I meet him? Now. Huh? Did he get a meeting that fast? Yeah kid so pack that thing up we'll be heading over. Not wanting to waste any more time I quickly packed my things and loaded up the scout as we went to meet the police commissioner. Chapter 40. Chapter 40 Meeting the Commissioner. On the way to meet the commissioner, Stacy informed me that we were heading to the police academy. The city hall was obviously not a place to test the scout so it was decided beforehand to go to a location that was more equipped for these sorts of things. Looks like we're here, alright kid follow me. Getting out of the vehicle we made our way to the academy which didn't look like how I expected. In fact, this place looked more like a university than anything else. With its large exterior and glass walls. You guys really invested in this building huh? Stacy just gave a smile at my comment while he looked at the building with fondness most likely reliving his academy days. Looks like Commissioner Allen arrived before us hearing his comment I turned toward a stern looking man in his late fifties with a fully equipped guard detail all dressed in police uniform. Noticing our gaze the commission seemed to have recognized Captain Stacy as he made his way over to us. Haha, <laughs> George it's been a while how's the kids? The man seemingly relaxed instantly upon greeting Stacy. They're doing good, how about you Phil? Ah, same old same old always stuck to their playstations. After this, the two chatted away for a couple of minutes mostly small talk, confirming that they were close friends. Based on what I had heard, apparently, the commissioner used to be Stacy's captain when he was a rookie. Ah, you must be Cole. He said as he reached out for a handshake Captain Stacy mentioned you had something big to show me, even said you might be the next Tony Stark. I hope I meet those expectations I spoke with humbleness as I gave Stacy a look of thanks who returned my gesture with a nod. I as well, now come along I'll lead you to one of our practice rooms. Men help them bring that crate. With that said we made our way to another room which was fairly large and appeared much more sophisticated than the gun range in the police station. 
this room was more like a training course that had you run through as it tested your reaction time. Once there we showed him the ballistic weave which was quickly tested with various guns available to officers. In the end, the weave appeared to be stronger and more efficient than even Kevlar. The only problem was how thin the material was which would definitely cause other major problems. However, their disappointment was quickly erased when I explained that the weave could be combined with Kevlar increasing a police officer's protection. This really is impressive. I don't even understand how it works. The material appears exactly the same and is quite thin. I'll have to discuss this with the mayor but I can already see this being approved. After that, we negotiated the pricing and settled at $220 per shirt. It may sound cheap considering how good the material is but in reality, it is still a great profit. Considering the fact that I only spent $120 to make the shirt, not including the machines. Then there's also the free advertisement and connections I'd receive along with this new connection. Now that this is over I'm quite curious about the box. Giving him a light smirk I called out for Scout 01 who made a similar entrance jumping out of the crate. His appearance immediately caught the officers off guard as they all drew their weapons. Whoa whoa relax allow me to introduce you all to the police scout. Commissioner Allen walked away from his security and made his way to the scout. He looked at me asking if it was okay to touch and I simply gave him a nod as confirmation. I can see why Stacy says you'll be the next Stark. In fact, you'll easily surpass him not even he made machines such as these. The man said as he touched the robot's chest like a kid in the candy store. But why would you want to sell this to the police? Wouldn't you get a bigger deal with the military? That would be the case and I do have plans to make other models specifically for the military. If I was to give a reason then it would be to help save the lives of more officers, even if the scout makes it over the top. My comment made all the officers smile except one who looked at the commissioner for permission to speak. Go ahead, Officer Lawrence. You say that this is to help protect officers but wouldn't this machine be taking our jobs? And isn't it a bit too militant to have roaming the streets? Lawrence asked as the rest of his colleagues turned back at the robot with a hint of worry. Even the commissioner gave me an inquisitive look with a hint of disapproval. I see your worry and in fact, the scouts are not meant to replace the police. They are just machines and don't have the heart to connect with the people. I'm sure many of you have experienced moments where you've had to set your priorities aside in favor of being a good person. These words reminded the officers of some of these moments. Particularly Officer Lawrence who thought back on a time when he helped a homeless man get a haircut and a ride to a job interview. When he was originally supposed to relocate the man. Such moments of going above their required job description is something a machine wouldn't be able to do. Therefore they will never be a true replacement unless I added such programming but I won't. I'm not here to take people's jobs after all. We see your point. But the question still stands. What sort of purpose would such a militant machine serve? The dangerous kind walking ahead I stood in front of the whole group and continued my dialogue imagine it, hostage situations, bombs, gang wars, and terrorism. I'm sure you lose officers in each of those situations and that's where my scouts come in. Let them take the lead, if a scout is shot he can be fixed, if he is destroyed he can be replaced. Just look at Hell's Kitchen. That place is not safe even for the police so let the scouts handle the gangs. The commissioner looked in agreement, especially when I mentioned Hell's Kitchen. The place truly was a lost cause at this point. Many words have been said but we still haven't had a demonstration. Looking at Stacy he walked over and took an AR-15 before handing it to the scout. This is a course we have all cadets go through. It not only tests an officer's reaction time but also their quick thinking skills. You see in the layout there are many targets with guns but also some that are civilian. I couldn't help but agree that this truly was a decent test for the scouts programming but I had confidence that it would pull through. Stacy noticed my readiness and took out a timer as he pressed the button. Initiating the 01 into the test as he ran in bullets flying. His reaction time stunned the officers not even needing a second to decide on whether or not to shoot. Yet despite this, it hadn't hit a single civilian and charged through hitting pure headshots on all the assailants. In the end, it made an academy record even if it wasn't official. Um does this thing always aim for the head? One officer asked in worry. No, this was merely for demonstration. Usually, it aims for parts of the body to temporarily put an assailant out of commission. With all the tests over I focused my attention back on the commissioner who looked in deep thought. I won't be able to approve this on my own. In fact, I don't think the mayor will be able to approve this either. 
We'll need to go through multiple tests and processes just to get this one approved. It may even take longer than a year. An answer I also expected but at least the ballistic weave would be approved. Do you think it would be possible to leave the machine here for further testing? I can see this going bad with SHIELD and HYDRA but I've already placed plenty of countermeasures. I can't always be worried about my tech falling into the wrong hands either. Alright I can do that but the scout won't be allowed to leave this building without me. Fair warning if it is forced the scout will retaliate. Commissioner Allen gave me a look of understanding as we all prepared to leave. However, all the officers began to get transmissions on their radios. Even Captain Stacy had gotten multiple messages. Sullivan, what's the problem? Sir there's havoc in the streets with multiple reports of a dinosaur. We thought it was a prank but we're currently in a firefight with that thing, ah it's coming. Looking around I saw the others getting similar messages and so far it didn't look good. This could only mean one thing. The lizard. Sullivan, are you there? However, no response came in making Stacy's expression grow grim. Commissioner Allen was also worried as he got information from his men. Commissioner, our men are getting torn apart out there. Finding a TV in the corner of the room I quickly turned it on and went to the news channel where footage began to appear of a giant lizard ripping cars in half as it fought police. What there? That's not the lizard from the movie and it's not at the bridge. It definitely wasn't the movie lizard, it looked drastically different, especially in the face. The movie had a more human appearance while this looked more monstrous. Its size was also terrifying as it lifted cars and threw them around. Behind me, the rest were also shell-shocked looking at the creature before the commissioner looked at me deep in thought before becoming serious. Cole can you send the scout there? What? Does he want to use the scout for that thing? The robot was good. I wouldn't lie on that part but fighting something like that was out of its league. Looking back at the TV I tried making the best decision and realized that it was actually pretty good even if Scout 01 died. A crisis like this was free publicity and if it could do decent harm it would also gain the support of people. The Scout might even be approved earlier with its added reputation. You got an extra bike? Chapter 41 Chapter 41 Scout vs the Lizard vs down in the streets of New York chaos ran rampant with horrendous scenes appearing throughout the block. Shredded vehicles and broken glass were common but property damage was the last worry in the mind of people. Why would it be, when there were corpses everywhere women, men, old, and young it didn't matter. Under such circumstances, people left behind all their belongings carrying only their loved ones, while the police remained behind to hold back the one responsible. A creature straight out of a nightmare. 15 feet tall with scales that could resist all their ammunition. The beast even had enough strength to lift trucks right off the ground like a child picking up a toy. The officers were way out of their league here and were losing more and more as the moments passed. They had tried every method possible from snipers and tear gas but nothing seemed to hold it back. However, despite all this, the officers remained steadfast firing at the beast trying to buy as much time as possible. One officer, in particular, was in the midst of shooting the thing when it suddenly jumped in front of him as it readied its arm to slash down and end his life. At this moment Officer Wazowski couldn't help but freeze in fear as he looked up at the towering creature. While it looked down on him like a lesser species. Is this how it ends? Dead to an overgrown lizard, not the way I thought I'd go he thought as he let go of his gun whilst losing hope. The beast looking down at the terrified man relished in its feelings of superiority as it swung down when suddenly a motorcycle appeared flying over the vehicles. Ah rah 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 rah. The sound of a revving engine echoed in the street when the lizard's face was suddenly hit head on. A gruach. The lizard gripped its eye as it screamed out in pain, with a clear tire mark left behind as proof of what just occurred. Enraged by this it began frantically searching for the one who dared to aim for its vision, going as far as losing complete interest in the human in front of it. When it finally found the culprit it wasn't like the rest. A tin man with rabbits like ears carrying an R in each hand, with a destroyed bike by its side. You are under arrest you have the right to remain silent anything can and. The machine's words enraged the lizard even more as it didn't even give it the chance to finish its words as he charged forward. The scout quickly began evasive maneuvers running and jumping over vehicles with the lizard hot on its tail. It had been given a mission by the New York Police Department to draw the beast as far as possible from the populace, before attempting to apprehend it and that's exactly what it would do. This chase soon became a game of cat and mouse with the scout dodging attacks by using the vehicles as cover. 
Things however took a sudden turn when this game got old. Come Harry E. The lizard annoyed by all this running began tossing vehicles at the scout that did its best to dodge. Thankfully the scout seemed to have accomplished its mission with citizens no longer in sight, as it changed its objective. Assailant has refused compliance. Deadly force authorized. No longer running, the scout began charging at the beast instead, as it would dive every so often to dodge flying pieces of debris, until it eventually had the perfect shot. With both arms lifted holding two R's it unloaded onto the lizard's face aiming right for his eyes. In pain, the beast quickly lifted its hands to block as it swiped its armor launching the scout down the road causing it to crash into a far off vehicle. Error multiple malfunctions detected. One toss was enough to leave it quite battered but wasn't enough to keep it down. With some effort, the scout slowly pushed its body out of the car before re-aiming to continue the fight. Ra, I'm going to destroy you. The lizard began another charge however this time it had its eyes covered while running blind. With its vision covered, the scout dove away from him and instead focused on the tanks from nearby vehicles causing explosions. Launching the lizard away with even an arm being ripped off in the process. After the multiple explosions, the lizard seemed to have regained some clarity as he looked at the new stump on his arm. No I just want to be healed but you took it from me. Getting back up Connors lost himself again, no longer noticing the armory growing as he picked up a car and threw it. The scout wasn't so lucky this time in its dodge with an arm being ripped off in return, which ended up being of no consequence for this machine that felt no pain as it aimed at more vehicles. Boom boom boom. Fire and smoke quickly filled the scout's vision as it waited patiently for movement when a piece of concrete suddenly appeared head on too fast to dodge. Launching the robot back as it was unable to stand. The lizard stood up with multiple wounds that were healing with a grin as it slowly began walking to the machine intent on ending this fight once and for all. Picking it up the lizard slowly tightened its grip when it suddenly couldn't see. Tossing the scout it began scratching at its eyes but struggled to rip the substance until it finally succeeded. In its hands were white strings that had a strange sticky feeling that wouldn't let go. In this sense of confusion, its instincts suddenly flared as it turned too slow and was punched hard enough to launch it into the air by some human in cheap goofed clothes. Buff switch Spider-Man. Hey hey you're making a mess of the streets don't you think it's bad enough already? I commented while trying to lighten the mood but in truth, I was really nervous. Just what was this thing and what's up with the robot? A question for later. I thought as the hulking beast got back up like it was nothing looking brand new. Another bug. Hey it's arachnid buddy get it right. My comment didn't seem to go over so well with the dino but oh well someone's bound to like my humor eventually. My joke didn't last long when suddenly I began to get a tingle on my skin. Oh no dodge. With quick and agile movements I began gliding past the creature's hits while shooting it with webbing forcing its movements to slow down. Nice just a bit more. However, things didn't go as I thought when I was hit like a rag doll. Huck. In the midst of webbing it knocked the air out of me with its tail. This damned sense of mine really sucks only working when it wants to. Maybe Col can fix it? Nah he's helped enough. I thought with a smile standing back up with talons ripping out of my gloves. A nice new trick I really took a liking to. With a burst of speed, I was back on the scaled monster as I slashed at parts that should have knocked it down but everything I hit just got healed. This thing was by far the hardest thing I'd fought which wasn't hard with only a couple of thugs in my experience. Well if talons won't work let's see how you like bioelectricity. Zwap. The electricity easily flowed through the thing as it convulsed with foam falling from its mouth. Not wanting to kill it, I stopped and jumped off. Now isn't that shocking bad to my said while imagining some drums in the background. The lizard even after all that seemed to have recovered again as it spit some liquid on the webs making them melt off. That's just nasty and unhygienic haven't you heard of mouthwash? No? Just asking I joked while having to dodge the spit wads heading my way. Using all my high school experience in the process from having to dodge the ones made by Flash. Looks like I got to do this the old fashioned way then. Mano a mano. Buff switch. Running back at it Peter hoped to make enough damage to tire out its healing factor. He was sure this thing wouldn't just heal forever and must have some sort of stamina so with that in mind he began unloading his fists on it. This went on for much longer than he wanted as it seemed to just get more annoyed, not tired in the slightest. In this back and forth he ended up being caught off guard with the tail wrapping around his foot as it began slamming him on the vehicles. Despite this Peter was back up again in no time. 
In all honesty, this fight was more like zombies due to how fast they both healed. However, things slowly began to take a turn when the scales slowly began falling off terrifying the lizard in the process. No 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 I need more, Connors shouted as he realized the serum was losing its effects. Peter didn't let up as he continued hitting the thing until the lizard's face morphed into one that was quite familiar to him. Connors? No, it can't be. In his shock, Connors saw a chance to escape and swung his tail with all his might as he knocked Peter away. Yet in that moment, a loud sound reverberated the street once more. Boom. Ugh. Glancing down he saw his arm ripped off and Robot limping towards him with a shotgun it picked up from who knows where. Hands in the air. Rage filled his eyes again but he knew he couldn't waste his time there and ran away with shots firing from behind before he found a manhole and jumped inside without a second thought, leaving behind a worried Spider-Man and a robot that rested the shotgun on its shoulder. Yet despite all the danger and destruction, these two were not alone. Hidden in a pile of debris, a gutsy blonde reporter managed to risk her life and follow the whole fight. Just for the chance to make headlines. Christine Everhart a familiar and forgettable character. Chapter 42, Chapter 42 Annoying Reporter Peter crawling out of a destroyed car looked worse for wear with his cheap get-up being shredded in multiple areas. He appeared more like a bum than a hero but that was the least of his concerns as he gazed at the manhole with complicated emotions. Just what had happened to Connors to make him into that thing? And why was he attacking people? Deep down he knew the reason but refused to believe it. The truth is he was scared of being the cause of Connors' transformation so he wouldn't believe it, not until he saw the proof with his own eyes. While Peter was lost in his own worries another person made his way to the manhole or should I say robot. Assailant escaped damage being assessed. Damage assessed unable to continue pursuit. New protocol return and receive repairs. With the lizard gone and the scout covered in injuries, it made a quick judgment deciding to leave. Peter glanced over at the robot in wonder. He had noticed it fighting Connors at the beginning of the fight and thought it was done for. In the end, it seemed getting a beat down wasn't enough to take the machine out. Walking over he began to give it a more in-depth examination and couldn't help but be fascinated. How could he not? It was a little robot. In fact this robot for some reason made him think of Col. No way he couldn't have. Hey robot, who are you? The scout hearing this turned toward Peter with twitching ears. Designation Scout 01 of the New York Police. Police? Now that I think about it the robot does have police written on its chest but isn't this too high grade? He expected something like this from the military, not the police after all. Who made you robot? Peter wanting to get more information asked the real important question. The scout all of a sudden changed its demeanor as it stood tall while holding its shotgun in a professional manner. I am a product of Dugan Technologies. Oh no. It really was Col, it's just one surprise after another with him. Well, I can't complain he helped me out and I won't deny that this thing is really cool. The police and Dugan Technologies? Is there anything more you can tell me about this collaboration or any words you'd like to say to the people of New York? These questions popped out of nowhere as both Peter and Scout 01 were caught off guard turning to a blonde woman holding a camcorder. Uh, look at the time I think I hear people in danger not wanting to be recorded by a new person Peter quickly pulled the legendary Joe Star and ran away. Hey wait a minute I got questions for you too. However, Christine was too late as Peter simply vanished into thin air. Well, there's still the robot at least. Looking at the scout she felt a bit bad for the thing. She had been in her news van at the beginning of the attack and hid there waiting for rescue. When she heard gunshots she assumed the police must be nearby and tried to find them only to run into a fight between a robot and a monster. It sounded like the plot of either a really good movie or a bad one. Normally people would have run away in this situation but she was not a normal human. No, she was a reporter. With some resolve, she took out her spare camcorder and began recording the fight which gave her many ideas. The fight of the century. Lizard vs Robot. The future of police. A new age of technology. So many great titles. But she needed to survive this first and everything relied on whether or not that rabbit robot won. Which seemed improbable with how it started losing its ground near the end. Luckily that new spider guy showed up and held it off long enough for the robot to get back in the fight. Speaking of robot it's getting away. While she was having a flashback the scout didn't waste any more time and began limping its way down the road. Not wanting to get left behind Christine chased after it with no hesitation. Excuse me. 
Mr. Robot, you mentioned being made by Dagon Technologies. Is this true and is there anything you can say about the company? Correct, the scout gave a short reply while ignoring her other question. Much to her disappointment. However, she was a reporter and didn't give up. Everyone knows they are the most persistent and annoying people on the planet, so this sort of behavior was to be expected. Unfortunately for her, the scout stopped responding completely as it focused on getting back as soon as possible. It had detected multiple malfunctions, a missing limb, and even damage to its battery giving it limited time to return. Luckily for it, there were already police advancing up the road toward it. Scout 01 reporting in immediate repairs required, the scout said to the first cop that arrived who happened to be Officer Wazowski. Hey, you're willing to talk to this guy but won't answer my questions? Christine complained to the robot's back as it walked away. Affirmative. Officer Wazowski ignoring Christine as well quickly ran up to his would-be savior. While checking the machine he noticed the multiple battle scars etched on its metal frame. Damn, that monster did a number on you. Thanks for the save by the way I wouldn't be here without you. The scout just had a blank face as it gave him a nod. Repairs required. Ah yeah, I can tell. Hey boys get this guy on a stretcher the captain said we need to bring him over as fast as possible. Hearing his orders the cops immediately got into action as they worked together to carry the wounded robot. Or while being extremely curious but their jobs came first, they could ask questions later. Excuse me officer but what is the robot? Is this a new addition to the police of New York? Christine was eager to get the scoop, she already had plenty of footage and information but a good reporter always gets more. Sorry ma'am but I'm going to have to leave this with no comment officer Wazowski said before chasing after his fellow officers leaving behind an upset reporter. He had spilled the bins once by accident and didn't want something like that ever happening again. Lest his superiors give him the same punishment as last time. Left behind Christine could only kick her feet in annoyance at not being taken seriously. Even Tony Stark took her seriously yet she was ignored by some cop. She thought to herself yet she herself knew he only cared enough to reply to her questions was so he could sleep with her. Dot. 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 Back with Col at the police academy, the entire fight was seen from beginning to end. All because of the inbuilt cameras the scout had which transferred all footage using its antennas. Well commissioner, I hope my scout met your expectations. I said while gesturing toward the screen which replayed some of the fight's highlights. Meet my expectations? Boy, you long exceeded them. Alan said while focused on the screen before becoming quite serious. I know we haven't officially purchased nor approved your robot, yet it has already been severely damaged saving our officers. For that, I can only offer my thanks and I promise I will do all I can to help in getting the scout approved. Commissioner Allen gave me a slight bow alongside several officers who knew most of their friends would have died if not for Scout 01. Seeing such a scene also caused me to smile since it seemed this all ended well in the end. The lizard escaped but hey I never expected the scout to win. Heck, I didn't even expect the robot to come back thankfully Peter showed up and was able to help it out, so this outcome was the best possible one for me. Stacy also was happy beside me thanks to the scout saving one of his co-workers but quickly focused on another matter. Phil, what about that reporter? She recorded everything. The mood soon became awkward as the commissioner just rubbed his head with some annoyance. There's not much we can do on that part. Christine Everhart is one of the best reporters around, traveling all across the country to every major event so she's pretty well known. If she says something because we took some footage we'll get a lot of heat especially if it gets proven. Stacy gained the same expression as the commissioner upon hearing this. True reporters were always hard to deal with. So she's like that Eddie Brock guy in San Francisco? No, not that bad she at least knows her limits and won't push too much. My ears perked hearing them mention Brock. So Eddie is in San Francisco. Doesn't that mean the Sony-verse is also tied into all this? Guess that's another bunch of movies I need to worry about in the future. Sigh. Well, I'll leave that for when it happens I have bigger things to worry about right now. Commissioner, I don't think I can leave the scout here. I need to take it back and do some repairs. And I also need to make a couple more for my warehouse's security. I have no doubt that S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydro are gonna be hot on my tail after that fiasco so I have to make my move first. Of course, my men just messaged me that they have it already downstairs. You can take it with you on the way out. The commissioner said as he gave me one last handshake. With a tired expression most likely thinking about all the fallout that's going to come from this.
it was no small decision after all involving untested and unapproved tech right into an active combat zone with citizens. But I had a feeling he'd pull through fine these politicians always do. With the meeting over, I and Stacy were ready to leave. However, not before the commissioner gave me his number for future updates. Chapter 43, Chapter 43 Troubles After that day I immediately went back home and gathered all the spiders before locking myself up in the warehouse with only the sounds of wielding and hammering echoing from the building. There was much work needing to be done for new scouts and eventually VR tech. Then there was also the arrival of the lizard who was still on the loose, most likely hiding somewhere in the sewers however that was more Peter's problem than mine. My issue lay on the workbench and I was not going to leave till I got it completed. While I focused on my work Gwen and the others visited me on multiple occasions. Mostly to get me outside and recommended that I take breaks but it always ended with my refusal. Besides, my stamina was quite impressive thanks to the CH-24 granting me plenty of all-nighters so there really wasn't too much harm. Thankfully they recognized that I wouldn't give up and allowed me this stubbornness while bringing me food every day after school. They really didn't need to do this but I appreciated it nonetheless and couldn't help but feel lucky to have friends like them. Besides my friends, I began to get an even more annoying visitor or should I say visitors. One that even puts S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA to shame. The Press Christine had apparently been busy distributing the footage among multiple news stations. How do I know this? Well, that's because it was already all over TV within a day. The fight was not the only thing included but even the footage of the scout mentioning Dagon Technologies. With that much information out there it wasn't too hard for the press to eventually find my building and swarm it like the bugs they were, making my choice of relocating the spiders a good one considering how bad some reporters can be. This also seemed to be the case with the police as multiple news stations stormed City Hall and various police departments demanding answers. So far things had been quiet from the mayor and police commissioner but I knew that wouldn't last long. There were just too many eyes honed in on this at the moment. All this urged me to work harder until I finally completed my work. After a long week of no rest and no sleep, I was able to finish building five more scouts. The reason why I took so long was all due to Scout 01, who knew it was harder to fix something than it was to build. The poor guy was almost broken to the point of no return but he still made it through. Standing tall I raised my hand while slicking my hair back. Scouts line up. Hearing my command they immediately got into position with Scout 01 in the forefront. Seeing them all in working order filled me with pride. I may not have been the original creator but I was still their maker. Scouts 2 through 4 you will be in charge of the building protection to make sure that no one who is not authorized enters the premises. I already gave you all the faces of the people allowed so this should make it easier reaching into my bag I pulled out 3 Glock 22s that I had confiscated a while back from the Hydro agents. These items are for your personal use but remember do not aim to kill. Only do so when you are left with no choice. If the intruder appears to be a civilian then give them warnings and slowly escalate to Taz's if need be I didn't want any of the press actually dying after all. Now that would be annoying to cover up. Affirmative. With three robots set in guarding my property, I decided to message the commissioner letting him know that the scout was ready. Surprisingly he gave me a fast response saying that a truck would be on its way to bring it over to the police academy. A little too fast. I thought while seeing how fast a man who was supposed to be swamped with work and press messaged me. I wouldn't be surprised if some politicians were pressuring the police when it came to scouts. Hell, they've been pressuring me mentioning investments and how they wanted to buy shares. Obviously, I refused but these kinds of people were extremely persistent. Surprisingly they and the press were the only ones bothering me. No Hydra, no shield, and no military but it was only a matter of time. Not wanting things to go wrong I rechecked Scout 01's coding and made sure all firewalls were in place along with its self-destruct mechanism. Worst case scenario if it is attacked it will blow up but if it notices tampering it is prepared to fry all its internal functions. Making it worth practically nothing. With everything checked, I had some room to breathe and sat down closing my eyes. Relaxing for the first time in days as I waited for the transport group to arrive. Dot. 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 The events during the lizard attack didn't only stun the citizens of New York but also various places around the world. Unexpectedly the source of all this wasn't even Connors. Yeah, a large monster was terrifying but it was nowhere near comparable to a fully functioning robot. That showed off in human feats. The ones most affected by this were the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
This had caught them all by surprise leaving them with no time to suppress any information whatsoever. They were truly helpless under such a situation while having to also deal with the members of the World Security Council who demanded that such tech be handed over. Unfortunately, Nick Fury ended up being the target of all this stress as he had many sleepless nights during the past week. It didn't help that not even Nick knew what to think of all this. One week the kid makes an impenetrable app then he's seen with the X-Men. Now all of a sudden there is a robot fighting a giant lizard. Coulson, what do you think of this whole situation? Fury asked as a man with a receding hairline stepped forward. Honestly sir I don't know but I do know that this all has the potential to be dangerous. The way we approach Call from now on cannot be the same as in the past. Fury had a light smile on his face recognizing that his subordinates thoughts were aligned with his own. You missed one thing in that judgment, Coulson. It isn't potentially dangerous but is definitely dangerous. Cole is someone we should have approached from the very beginning. Not doing so was my mistake. Lesson learned now we change our tactics. Phil agreed with Fury's point of view as many things could have changed if they had just met the kid and even recruited him. Yet all they did was stalk him while everything blew up in their faces. You're saying it's time to meet the kid? Coulson asked while not being too surprised as such a meeting was bound to happen. Fury gave a nod this meeting has been long overdue. I want you to clear my schedule while I head out with a new plan. Fury stood up as he put on a black leather trench coat, ready to go meet the source of all his troubles until his door swung open with a female agent. Fury and Coulson both looked at one another in surprise as this was not normal agent behavior before looking at the intruder Maria Hill. So we found him, she exclaimed while out of breath. Found who? Fury asked hoping it was good news for once. Stark sir, we found Tony Stark he escaped from the Ten Rings. Those words froze the room leaving both men with surprised expressions growing on their faces. Coulson change of plans I want a complete debriefing related to his escape. I'm going to need you on the front of all this. Maria, I'm leaving you to clear my schedule while I'm gone handling the gun technologies. Fury showed his leadership expertise as he quickly directed his subordinates to various tasks. Yes, Sir X2. With a new sense of weight in the air both Maria and Phil ran out of the room to accomplish their duties, while Fury walked behind with full focus. He had a bad feeling that from today on things would no longer be normal and oh how right he was. This was just the beginning of things to come.